Afternoon, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Thanks for joining me for our newest Traders Exclusive Strategy Series. Uh, we have four great traders for you today. Jeff Tompkins and John Thomas and Fausto Pugliese and Adrian Togrei. And I think I've got to fix Fausto's last name. I think I might have mispronounced it, but I'm sure he will let me know. So without further ado, I want to, uh, this is Sherry. I'm your host for today. We're going to discover how to fix bad options trades. We're going to find tools that Wall Street doesn't want retail traders to know about. We're going to explore inflation that is peaking. Uh, and we're going to be looking at how it's going to fall by the year end of the year. And we're going to understand five methods for overcoming issues of loss because that is a definite thing that happens at all times, right? So please check out tradersexclusive.com where we regularly post articles and videos, clips with valuable trading tips and techniques. This is also where you're gonna find the recording of today's webinar that I just mentioned. And before we get started, you know it, gotta do the disclaimer. You should carefully consider whether trading is suitable for you in light of your circumstances, knowledge, and financial resources. You may lose all or more of your initial investment. Opinions, market data, and recommendations presented here are subject to change at any time. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Uh, we'd like for you to please take notes with a little bit of context and write your questions down and hold them until the, uh, until the speaker is done. Um, I think that we do have a couple of people who will be asking you questions on the fly, so you may need to pay attention. <laughs> and our first speaker is Jeff Tompkins of Altos Trading with How to Fix Losing Options Trades. And Jeff is a professional stock options futures trader and hedge fund manager who has over 20 years of experience trading the markets. Jeff's successful career led him to create Altos Trading LLC in order to help others achieve financial freedom through consistent and profitable trading strategies. Welcome, Jeff. Thanks for being with us. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. I am going to turn you into a presenter, poof, and I'm going to poof you to an organizer. So you should be good to go. Take it away. I lost your audio there, Sherry, for a minute. Are you still there? I am here. I'm, I've just uh, made you the presenter and you should be able to see the chat. Now you're gonna open up, um, it's the box called questions is where you'd see people talking to you to answer your questions. Great. Um, and I can see your screen. So I will stop talking and let you take it away. Excellent, all right. Well, thanks again for having me and thanks everybody for joining. I have a lot of great stuff to cover today. Uh, Sherry obviously went over their disclaimer. Um, I'll just run through ours here real quick. We know that trading securities and options involves risk. And prior to buying or selling an option, an investor must receive a copy of characteristics and risks of standardized options. And of course, need a broker to trade securities and must meet suitability requirements. Uh, we will be going over some uh, past uh, historical results um, from our strategies. And just know that we don't guarantee that anyone will mirror our performance due to the time critical nature of trading brokerage fees and uh, activity of other subscribers. Um, we don't guarantee that. So um, although we will be showing performance numbers that base, that are based on trader, uh, trades that uh, users could enter based on our strategies and signals. All right, so we're gonna start out with a, a fun little interactive uh, trivia here uh, before we get into how to fix losing options trades. Uh, actually, uh, one quick question first. Let's do a little poll. I'm just curious uh, of the attendees that are on with us today, uh, how many options traders out there in the audience? Just uh, type in the uh, chat or Q&A how many of you guys are options traders or maybe you haven't traded options and are considering trading options sometime in the future. All right, Ben, Al, Marion, yeah. So it looks like we got uh, Mar Mauricio, options and futures, cool. Uh, Mike. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah. So looks like we have a lot of uh, active options traders out there, which is great. So this will be uh, relevant uh, to, to you guys and um, and I, I believe will be very beneficial by the time we're done with our session today. So um, thanks for sharing there. And uh, we'll start out with our little trivia question, which 
um, might seem to be not relevant to trading at first, but uh, you'll quickly see that, that it is. Um, so we're going to look at two commonly uh, common products uh, that are you know, commonly known uh, in households today or maybe from decades past, as you'll see there with the Nintendo gaming system. Um, so pull up your chat again and let me know if you guys have any idea what these two products have in common. So WD-40 and the Nintendo gaming system. And I'll give you a little hint. It's not uh, spraying the WD-40 into the gaming system to uh, get the game to go in the in the slot. Although I'm sure that's been tried. Uh, any ideas what, what these two products might have in common? Lanny says electrical. Not quite. Oil. Chuck says oil. So it's not real obvious. I'm not seeing any any correct answers yet. Um, John says both companies publicly traded. Um, yeah, so uh, it, it, it's not an obvious answer. So it's a bit of a trick question uh, and, and one you might not expect. But both of these companies have actually uh, failed and faced uh, really big failures in the past earlier on in their uh, business cycles. So um, let's talk a little bit about that and how they overcame it. So as far as Nintendo goes, it, you know, we know it now is uh, as a gaming company that launched an, uh, an era in the gaming industry. Um, but surprisingly, it didn't start out that way. It, it, the Nintendo wasn't a success off the bat. And in fact, their first offering, the Famicom console, had to be recalled after only a few months. Uh, and then, you know, Atari came along in the mid 80s, which, um, you know, obviously became a competitor and kind of left the whole industry in a mess. Uh, and then to, to, to counter that, Nintendo attempted to uh, launch their Nintendo NES system, but that barely sold uh, when it was introduced in the mid 80s. Uh, so uh, despite the fact that Nintendo is a hugely successful company now, um, they, they didn't start out that way. Um, so uh, not uncommon for a company to face, face failures. Um, and it, ultimately what leads to their success is the ability to make adjustments to their business models, their products and services. Uh, and that's, of course, what Nintendo did with those two little guys uh, at the lower right uh, corner of the screen there, Mario and Luigi. Um, so they introduced these two characters, and by the end of 86, um, it actually completely turned their business around and changed the history of American gaming forever, uh, just with that one adjustment uh, to their, uh, their offering and their business model. Um, and then surprisingly, WD-40 actually uh, failed, and not only did it fail, it failed um, uh, many, many times. And if you aren't aware, that's actually how WD-40 got its name. Um, it comes from the fact that the formula uh, represents the 40th attempt to create a degreaser and rust protection solvent. Um, so they actually failed 40 or 39 times before they were successful on the 40th attempt. Um, and uh, just another uh, testament to uh, over, you know, the importance of overcoming failure in business um, in order to achieve success. Um, so, you know, imagine if they'd given up after 39 tries, we wouldn't uh, likely have WD-40 uh, today. Um, and uh, this is relevant to our topic today because similarly to, uh, you know, uh, businesses, whatever the business might be, um, we face failures, right? And that happens in trading and investing. And so the key to really the key to success is making adjustments to overcome failures and turn them into successes. Uh, and that's going to be our the theme of our topic today. Um, and when we look at of all the reasons you know that one might fail at trading and investing, and, and there can obviously be many causes of failure, um, if we try to boil it down into a single cause, which you know is difficult considering all the, the variables and things, but um, it's ultimately the losing trades that wipe out profits from our winning trades that result in the low success rate for traders and investors as, as kind of an end result uh, metric. And uh, you know, there's of course a lot of things that can lead to, to losing trades, um, but they are our biggest overhead that we face in a trading business, especially nowadays with most brokers being commission free. 
um, other than you know a computer and an internet connection and of course uh, risk capital uh, we don't really have a whole lot of overhead so that's where uh, you know losing trades and investments become our biggest overhead um, but now here's the good news there are are, are inevitably going to be losses with any trading and investment strategy okay there's just no way around that um, so our goal is to minimize those and maximize profits right that's a, a, a mantra of the trading and investing world um, and the good news is a very high percentage of losing trades can actually be fixable and avoidable um, so it might be a matter of you know mitigating a loss that would have otherwise been larger or um, you know uh, adjusting into uh, from a loss into a break-even position or even turning a losing position into a profitable one uh, and this is what i believe uh, really separates successful traders and investors from those who uh, are not successful in the long run um, and as i mentioned losses are going to be inevitable and they're simply really a cost of doing business in the trading world um, but i'm going to show you today how many can be avoided and even turned into profitable trades by making a few simple tweaks. So let's start by looking at a few commonly traded option strategies like the iron condor. Uh, and so imagine if you could take a losing iron condor on the S&P index, the SPX, that's down $3,900, making a simple tweak to that trade and then turning it into a, a $2,400 winner. Or how about a credit spread? A lot of options traders attempt their hands at credit spreads. A popular strategy, um, and uh, uh, potentially a really effective strategy uh, with a caveat that it's got a, a negative risk reward uh, skew so that the risk on any individual trade is typically greater than the award reward. And um, that can be okay as long as we don't take max losses uh, on every losing trade and we know how to make adjustments. So imagine if you have a loss on a credit spread trade, let's say on the queues, that's down $580, but you're able to make a simple tweak to that trade and turn it into a $620 winner. Or how about a naked put? Um, a, a naked put is simply where you short a put with the expectation the underlying security is gonna rise in price. But what if the stock drops? Let's look at an example, for instance, on Siena, where if you had entered a naked put and then we're down $730 on your position, but then we're able to make a simple tweak or adjustment to the trade and turn it into a $540 winner. Well, here's the good news. These are actually not hypotheticals. These are actual trade alerts and results that were sent out to our members in situations where there was a drawdown in a position and we were able to make an adjustment to that option strategy and turn it from a losing position into a winning, uh, a net winning position. Um, so I'm gonna go over how we do these things in our session today. Let's start by looking at a real world, real money example. Um, so again, get your, your, your uh, chat box pulled up and ready. Uh, if you look at, uh, so that, by the way, this is an actual uh, real money uh, screenshot from my personal TD Ameritrade brokerage account. Um, so these are actual, these were actual live real money trades. Um, and you'll notice at the bottom right of the corner, the date, um, and I'm in the mountain time zone. So uh, I took this uh, six minutes after the open on August 24th, 2015. Does anyone know what happened on that day? type in the chat or the q a if you have if you know what happened on august 24th 2015. yeah that's right exactly chuck so the flash there was a flash crash um and and the dow opened down i think over a thousand points uh right at the open and um and this flash crash really you know shook a lot of people right it was a huge percentage uh, point drop in the major indices uh and so what we're looking at here in my uh, td ameritrade account are uh, what about 10 12 positions uh, that were all uh, at, at one point naked puts so they were naked puts so what that means is that it being a bullish option strategy is i want that stock to go up in order to uh, produce a profit on the trade uh, but you'll notice on this particular uh, day of the flash crash six minutes into the open virtually every uh, uh, stock in my portfolio where i had sold puts on these uh, was down and they were and many were down significantly double digits um, HDB down you know over 12 percent um, ISIS down over 10 percent uh, TNA down over 14 percent so every stock in the portfolio was down but if you 
look at my um, at my profit and loss, you'll see it was over seven thousand six hundred dollars. So how can I have a strategy that should have lost money uh, on uh, during the flash crash on a portfolio of stocks that are all down a single and double digit percentage points um, and show an open P&L of over seven thousand six hundred? Well, I did it with the trade adjustment, and I'm going to show you exactly how I did that here shortly. So there's actually an adjustment to fix virtually every bad options trade. In fact, there's typically multiple adjustment techniques that are available to us um, for different option strategies. And over the next uh, hour or so, it's actually going to be more like 45 minutes um, or so, we're going to uh, be going over some of those. And I'm going to reveal a few of my uh, most effective adjustment techniques to fix losing options trades. So we're going to you know, look at cert, uh, particular option strategies like credit spreads and how to use a delta neutral hedge and turn those into a winner, into a winning trade or a losing naked put and executing a horizontal roll to uh, either mitigate a loss or turn it into a winner. And you can do these for, again, for virtually any strategy. You, you can adjust even simple long calls and long puts uh, by converting those into vertical credits or uh, vertical uh, debit spreads. Um, so there's a lot of ways to adjust. And um, I'm going to show you some of my best adjustment techniques on the session today. Uh, so to give you a little bit of background on myself before we get into that, I have over 20 years of experience trading the stock options and futures markets. Uh, I received my professional training at Morgan Stanley as an intern at the trade desk. Um, I am the founder and chief investment strategist of Altus Trading. Uh, we actually have over 50,000 members now in over 100 countries across the globe. Um, I'm also a professional hedge fund, man uh, hedge fund manager, so I manage money for my clients at Altos Capital. And I'm also the publisher of some of the top performing alert services on the market today, and we're going to talk about those. And a lot of the strategies and adjustments I'm going to show you um, are uh, provided to our members through those services. Um, so by the end of our session, you'll discover how to fix losing options trades and even turn them into winning trades. So we, we can't necessarily turn every loser into a winner, um, but I'm going to show you some really cool techniques to uh, mitigate losses and even turn some of these around into winners. And I, I'm going to also reveal uh, my top trade adjustment tricks to reduce the risk and increase profit potential. So whether you're just starting out or you're a seasoned pro, this is really must have information for today's markets. So let's start out by talking about option strategy. Um, there's kind of, uh, from a high level overview, two ways to approach options um, across you know, a, a basket of strategies. And that's either being an option seller or an option buyer. Okay, so uh, selling options, which is one of our core strategies, um, has uh, tends to put the odds in the trader's favor. So it has actually better statistical odds when executed correctly than a casino has over its gamblers. And the nice thing about the, the, the option selling side of things is you have uh, a wider range of potential outcomes that could result in a profit. So you really have three ways to, to win um, on a bullish uh, you know, option selling strategy. The stock could go up, um, it could stay flat, or it could even move against you to some degree uh, where and still allow for a potential profit. Um, so that's uh, one of the benefits of option selling. Um, it also allows time decay to work in your favor. Um, so time decay, if you are an options trader or uh, have studied options at all, you'll know is uh, kind of the enemy of an option buyer. Um, and also selling premium has uh, more room for error and it's typically easier to adjust. So as I mentioned, we can adjust virtually any strategy, um, but I'll show you that uh, typically an option selling strategy uh, can be uh, easier uh, to adjust and put the, uh, the odds in the trader's favor in that sense. Um, so let's start out with one of our favorite core strategies and one that I use personally in my own uh, trading account, and that's selling puts for income. So a naked put or short puts when you sell the open put option. So you're an option seller versus being an option buyer. And for that, you collect a premium or credit in your brokerage account for entering the trade. Now, when the stock rises and the put options that you sold expire out of the money, you get to keep the entire premium you collected when you sold them, if you keep those until expiration and the stock's above your strike price. So let's just look at a basic example. Um, we'll use a generic stock, ABC stock, and let's say it's trading at $100 per share. And then let's say you decide to sell to open 10 of the 95 strike contracts for $250 a contract, and let's say those expire in 14 days. Well, since each contract controls 100 shares of stock, you would receive an immediate deposit of $2,500 in your brokerage account for executing this type of trade. Uh, and that would be before any commissions and fees. Now, as long as ABC stock closes above $95, which is our strike price at expiration, 
you keep the entire 2500 premium you received when you initiated the trade. Sounds pretty cool, right? So there's a lot of possible uh, outcomes in this trade as far as where the stock can go. Um, and there's basically three ways to win. It could go up, it could go nowhere, or it could even move down by $5 or less per share. All right. Now that's, uh, you know, in a picture perfect world, uh, fantastic, but it always, doesn't always work out that way, right? So uh, we often encounter uh, difficulties uh, with, uh, with a trade once it's been opened. And this is where trade adjustments come into play. And we're gonna get into how to uh, make adjustments to this particular strategy. Um, and there, uh, there's some common misconceptions around selling puts. Um, number one is that uh, it's extremely risky. Uh, well, uh, like any other strategy, it can be um, if it's mismanaged or over leveraged or other uh, things that you know, um, that don't involve risk control and risk management. Um, but when you look at it, uh, just from a objective standpoint, um, it actually has a similar risk profile to buying a stock or writing a covered call. Um, so your exposure is about the same. So where the risk really comes in is if you're over leveraging um, your account um, and uh, certainly that's something we never want to do um, but when done correctly it can be an incredibly consistent method for collecting income from the options market and it's actually often how warren buffett acquires stock at times um, so a lot of big uh, fund managers uh, including uh, myself as a hedge fund manager use this strategy uh, to collect premium whether it's to uh, lower the cost basis on an entry for an equity or uh, purely just to collect the premium with no in, uh, you know, anticipation of owning shares of the underlying stock but what unfortunately happens is um, a lot of traders who uh, trade options in general and uh, particularly uh, option selling strategies like a naked put um, rely on a hope and a prayer. Um, and, and that's not OK because we need to have a backup plan and a way to adjust these when they don't work out as intended. And that's to me really the single biggest difference between an amateur trader and a professional trader is the ability to adjust losing trades and manage those appropriately. Uh, because most traders do enter a trade and cross their fingers and they only have one exit strategy. They either win or they take a loss. Um, and uh, that makes things a lot more difficult. So when a trade doesn't work out as intended, we don't accept that as an inevitable loss because we know that there are some tweaks and adjustments that we can make that can potentially save the trade. And in some cases, as I'll show you and demonstrate to you, even result in greater profits. So let's talk about what happens when things go wrong with it, with uh, an option strategy in general, and in particular, selling a put. Um, so with the put selling strategy, um, we have a primary exit goal, right? So, and that would be for the put to expire out of the money where we keep 100% of the premium collected. And, um, and in order for this to occur, the stock would have to finish above the strike price at expiration. Now, in my experience, um, going back nearly seven years in the track record of our uh, service that issues recommendations uh, on this strategy, um, this happens. In fact, um, I just updated this uh, yesterday, going back to the inception of our, uh, of our service, in about 282 closed trades going back nearly seven years, 87% uh, of the time we hit the primary exit strategies. So that means no adjustment is needed to the trade, which is incredible. That's that's a great strike rate for a primary exit. Um, but in that 13% of the, the, the time where things uh, move against us to a point where we need to you know, do something about it and make an adjustment, that's where our second uh, dairy exit strategy comes in. Um, and one of our uh, favorite adjustment strategies often results in even greater profits with the strategy than was initially possible when the trade was entered um, at the credit. Um, so let's talk about how to do that. This is how we adjust a losing short put. And this is just one of our adjustment techniques. It's one of our favorites. Um, we have many. Um, and that's rolling. So rolling involves closing out our initial trade. That's the short puts that we initially open and opening a new trade at a further out expiration. And we'll typically use the same strike price and number of contracts. And the reason we do that is we wanna collect an equal or greater credit or deposit into our account. And it's actually this one strategy, and this slide hasn't been updated, um, that's now resulted in over 280 wins in nearly seven years with zero net losses. Okay, so that includes trade adjustments. Um, and again, 87% of our 280 plus trades did not even require an adjustment with this strategy, but about 13% did. All right, and so this is a powerful strategy because over the last seven years, we've had market crashes, right? Early 2020, uh, S&P's down 
Um, we've had major corrections. In fact, we've had many of them over the last seven years. Um, we've had nice bull runs. So we've seen a variety of market conditions. And this, uh, and uh, the option selling strategies that we use, as well as the adjustment techniques that we use, have weathered all of these, stood the test of time, and in the case of this strategy, resulted in uh, zero trades with a net loss. Okay, so I'm going to show you that um, here shortly. Now, the other uh, adjustment that we'll uh, sometimes use on a, a short put is a delta neutral hedge. And this is actually the strategy that I uh, used on the day of the flash crash in, the, in the, um, uh, the, the slide that I just showed you previously with my TD Ameritrade uh, brokerage account. All right, um, so a delta neutral hedge is a little bit more complex, um, but basically you have to buy to open um, enough at the money or near the money put options in order to offset we try to get as close to delta neutral as possible, the positive delta of your existing short put options. And the cool thing about this is if the underlying uh, security continues to move down, it can actually produce an overall net profit. Um, and so we'll typically reserve this adjustment technique for uh, situations where the underlying security is moving down aggressively. All right, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the importance of matching the, the right adjustment up to the right uh, uh, market conditions or uh, price action of the underlying security. So uh, before we get into the rolling example, um, let me let me uh, give you the formula for a delta neutral hedge for this strategy. Um, so we're going back to my TD Ameritrade brokerage account here on August 24th, 2015. Um, and I'm going to show you how I, I was able to uh, produce an open P&L of over 7,600 in the midst of a flash crash and all uh, you know dozen or so of these stocks being down single and double uh, digits. Uh, percentage points. All right, so here's the calculation. Um, first, we want to take the number of contracts in our initial uh, short put position, and then we want to multiply those, that number of contracts by the delta, and the delta is, is a Greek that you can find in your options chain in any broker that offers options trading. So we multiply the delta by 100. So that's going to give our, us our position delta. We then want to divide the at the money option delta by the position delta to get the number of contracts to buy. Um, and then we're gonna end up with a delta neutral hedge that can actually profit on a continuing decline in the underlying security. Um, so I'll just give you a quick example here to, to make this uh, uh, clearer and, and easier to understand. All right, so this is just a generic options chain. And let's say we had started out selling a 58 strike put on this security. Well, as you can see here, that 58 strike has now moved in the money, mean, meaning the underlying security is now trading below that strike price. All right, so this is where we may look at uh, executing a delta neutral hedge like I did here in the case of, um, of, the, of the flash crash back in 2015. All right, and so to do that, we wanna get our position delta. You see the delta there is uh, 0.59. Um, so again, we have to multiply that by 100 and we can ignore the negative. All puts have a negative delta, calls have a positive delta. So we just want the number basically. And so that's going to give us our position delta of 590 if we're using 10 contracts, right? So we multiply the delta by 100 and then by the number of contracts, and we'll use 10 for the example. So our position delta is 590 um, because the delta at the uh, closest to the at the money strike, which is the 57 strike, is 48. All right, and so that gives us our delta neutral hedge number of 12.29. Now we can't buy 12.29 contracts, so we round up or down to the nearest number. In this case, we would round down to 12. So what that tells us is that we need to buy 12. Uh, 57 strike put contracts to neutralize the delta at our short 58 strike contracts. And that's gonna basically put us in a position to where if the underlying security continues to move down, um, it, it can result in an overall profit in the position um, and offset losses in the short puts. And this is how I achieved this on the day of the flash crash back in 2015. All right. So um, there's the formula for delta neutral hedging, and it can actually be used for really any strategy, but um, this is how you would use it for a short put. Um, now let's talk about rolling. So this is actually a real world rolling adjustment example. It's one we issued to our members back in 2019. So the initial uh, recommendation was sent out on September 12th for the August week for 44.5 strike puts on Micron. Uh, at the time, the, the credit on those was $55 per contract. So if we'd done 10 contracts, the credit's $550 before commissions and fees. Now, unfortunately, Micron started to move down in price. And by September 27th, 
it was trading below our, 50, our 44 50 strike puts and we had to uh, uh, go to work and decide how to make an adjustment to this trade. So we issued an alert to our members to go ahead and roll the Micron October, uh, uh, sorry, August week four contracts to the October week two at the same strike price. But you'll notice what's happening here. The debit was $1.19, but the credit on the rolling adjustment was 216 per contract. So that's called, that's, so that's called saying net cash positive. We're basically um, rolling for a greater credit than we were debited. And the beauty of this uh, adjustment technique is we, we don't actually need the, the stock to recover back above the short strike to produce a profit. Um, we just need a drop in implied volatility and for the stock not to, uh, to, to, to continue to move down. Now, in this case, um, the stock never did recover back above the, the strike price, but just about a month later on October 11th, um, we were able to alert our members to close the Micron trade at a 52 cent debit. So what you'll notice here is that we started with a 55 or 55 cent uh, uh, credit um, and then we're debited a dollar 19 and then credited to 16 on the rolling adjustment. And even though we closed the uh, had our members close this one at a 52 cent debit, which is only three pennies below the initial credit and the stock was sitting below the strike price at 43.59. So it didn't even recover back above uh, the entry price. The total profit was $820 per 10 con contracts traded because of the rolling uh, adjustment and the net cash positive uh, position. Okay, so this is the beauty of rolling when it's done correctly, right? So the initial profit potential back on September 12th when we issued the alert was $550 per 10 contracts. But with this series of adjustments, Although the trade was, uh, you know, uh, the, the members may have been in the trade longer than initially expected. Uh, instead of a couple of weeks, it ended up being about a month. You'll notice that for that, the trade off uh, there was that they actually were able to produce a bigger profit than the initial potential back on September 12th. All right, so this is a real world example of rolling. And the reason that it works when done correctly is it allows you to stay net cash positive while taking advantage of decreases in implied volatility and increases in the underlying share price. All right, the silver lining, as I mentioned, is you don't have to recover past your short strike every time in order to be profitable. Since we're staying net cash positive with the rolling adjustments, the net credits over time can offset the debits. But again, this has to be done uh, in a particular way in order to produce this type of result. Um, and I showed you how that was uh, done in that real world Micron example. Now let's shift gears a little bit here and talk about a different option strategy, credit spreads and iron condors. Um, this is another core strategy of, of ours here at Altos Trading, um, and it's generally an, a popular option strategy across you know, uh, an array of options retail options traders. Um, uh, and it's you know, typically is alluring and, and lures people in because um, it, it can have a high win rate, right? But the trade-off is um, the losses can be bigger than the wins. That's kind of the, the, the caveat to the credit spread and iron condor strategy. Um, but basically, if you're not familiar with it, it's created by buying cheaper option contracts and simultaneously writing an equal number of more expensive op option contracts uh, at the same expiration. Um, and the reason it's called a credit spread is that you actually receive a cash or a net credit for executing the trade. Uh, and this uh, credit to your uh, trading account is why Again, we call these credit spreads, um, but it's basically a vertical uh, a spread. So you have two strikes, same expiration, equal number of contracts. Now, an iron condor is simply a combination of two credit spreads, so a bull put spread and a bear call spread on the same underlying security. So this is more of a market neutral strategy, one we would use if the underlying security is uh, moving in a sideways channel, for, in for instance, or in a range, or um, we don't expect it to make any significant move to the upside or downside. Now, the reason that I, I like these two strategies um, is that unlike a lot of option strategies where you have to be very precise in your timing um, and other uh, metrics like implied volatility and, and things of that nature, um, with credit spreads, you don't really necessarily have to hit a bullseye. And certainly when you use trade adjustments, it gives us a lot more room for flexibility. So you can really throw darts all over the dartboard. Um, and as I mentioned, with other option strategies, there are also many ways to adjust a, a losing credit spread or iron condor. Uh, and one of those is with delta neutral hedging. So we're gonna look at using delta neutral hedging 
to transform a credit spread or iron condor into a delta position um, if one of the short strikes in the spread, in the case of an iron condor, or the short strike in a credit spread is breached. Um, and what can, this can do is it can often help offset losses and even produce a profit if the underlying continues to move past the spread. And um, it, 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 again, needs to be used under the right conditions um, and matched with the aggressiveness of the underlying security, the move of the underlying security. Um, so let's uh, look at an example of that. Again, this is a real world example where we issued a recommendation to our members on June 15th to sell the uh, June week five iron condor spread on the S&P 500 index, the SPX. At the time, the credit for that was $1.10 or $110 per contract. Um, so for 10 contracts, um, the credit would have been $1,100 uh, before commissions and fees. Now, unfortunately, just 10 days later, the S&P breached our 2725 strike puts in the, in the spread. So the, in other words, it went down and breached the short puts, leaving us with a potential $3,900 loss for every 10 contracts traded. However, instead of accepting the loss and moving on to the next trade, we went to work and executed an, a delta neutral hedge adjustment that was sent out to our members on June 26. And that was to close half of the 2725 strike puts to neutralize the delta in the put side of the spread. Now, only one day later, the S&P, unfortunately, for anyone who was short uh, the S&P or uh, executed a bearish uh, option strategy on the index, uh, or sorry, a bullish option strategy on the next, wouldn't have done well. But one day later, June 27th, because of our uh, delta neutral hedge adjustment, our members were able to close that S&P SPX iron condor for $240 a contract. So that was that would have turned a $3,900 loss on 10 contracts into a profit of $2,400 um, before commissions and fees, um, just over the course of one day after making this adjustment as the S&P continued to decline. So what you'll notice here is that the initial credit was uh, 110 per contract, but the final credit was 240 per contract. So this adjustment um, actually resulted in a greater credit than the initial uh, potential profit potential when we first sent the alert out. Um, so it can really work magic when the underlying continues to move in the direction of your breach vertical credit spread as it did in this case. Um, this is another example on, on Apple. We'll just run through this one real quick because we don't we're a little bit short on time. Um, but this is a good example of how to uh, make a, a credit spread adjustment. Um, so that was an iron condor adjustment. Now, we'll notice that there's some significant resistance on Apple. Of course, this isn't a current chart. This is from the past. Um, but you'll notice that at the time, there was significant resistance around the 125 level, right? So you can see price uh, hitting that resistance level. So that might be an, uh, a point uh, or a level on the chart where it may make sense to open a bear call credit spread. But unfortunately, you'll see what happened there in uh, later December. Apple blew right through that 125 level, right? Um, and that would be uh, bad for a bear call credit spread. Um, so uh, this is a situation where we would go to work and execute an adjustment. Um, so let's look at that. Well, if we had sold a 125, 127 call spread on Apple at the time, we noticed that um, horizontal resistance level, the credit would have been $59 per contract. So $590 on every 10 contracts, and we're using 10 here in this example. Um, now, you'll notice that when we looked at the chart, Apple blew through that 125 level. So that's uh, exactly what we don't want to have happen, but um, we'll, we'll talk about how to address that. So at the time that happened, this, uh, this trade would have shown a $560 loss. All right, um, now here's how we can make an adjustment in this type of situation. We can neutralize the delta, and this is another way to do it compared to the one we just looked at on the iron condor example. Um, by inserting uh, long contracts but uh, at a strike between the two strikes in our initial spread. So we had a 125, 127 strike call spread. If we enter uh, a 127, or sorry, 126 long call spread in between those two strikes at an equal number of contracts, let's see what happens. So again, there was a $560 loss. Apple's moving aggressively through our call spread. We're executing a delta neutral hedge adjustment. And by the time expiration rolls around, that initial spread would have had a $1,385 loss. So basically a max loss if we had just left it alone. But the hedge that we executed, the 126 strike long calls, would have had a $6,300 profit. So the net result of this overall trade with the adjustment 
would have been just under $5,000 on every 10 contracts traded. So that's uh, another example of how uh, a delta neutral hedging type of adjustment um, can be executed on a credit spread uh, when the underlying security is making an aggressive move through your through your spread. So there's some crucial tips here to consider. Um, these are some of our uh, more commonly used and popular adjustment techniques. Um, and again, we have uh, many others, but I wanna give you some tips in terms of selecting these um, for the right conditions because trade adjustments um, can be both defensive and offensive. Um, so, for instance, you know, the delta neutral hedge, I would consider more of an offensive, aggressive adjustment technique, and rolling might be more, uh, you know, uh, less aggressive or defensive technique. Um, but we want to make sure the trade adjustment matches the strength of the move and the underlying security. So if the market's in a sharp decline, as I mentioned, a delta neutral hedge can often turn losing trades into winners if that decline uh, persists. If the underlying uh, slightly breaches your spread, um, in that case, rolling uh, might be a better alternative and can help us ride out the trend until it reverses or until implied volatility decreases. So the trick is uh, with adjustments is not only knowing how to execute the adjustment as I've shown you on our session, but when and what to adjust uh, based on market conditions and price action of the underlying security. So hopefully now you guys know, and I've demonstrated that a, a high percentage of losing trades can actually be avoidable. The loss can either be mitigated and reduced um, or potentially turn into a break-even or even profitable trade. And I sh shared with you some real-world examples of how we've done that with our members and how I've done it in my uh, personal Real Money TD Ameritrade brokerage account. So there is an adjustment to fix virtually every bad trade, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to have losing trades. It just means that we have backup plans to help uh, you know, address situations where we don't necessarily need to walk away and accept a loss and we can actually look at some alternatives for turning that loss into a winning trade. And I've revealed a few of my most effective adjustment techniques to help fix losing options trades. And uh, hopefully you guys have gained a lot from that and, and gotten some good tips and tricks from me on the session today. Um, and, and you know, when I get asked why I teach these uh, techniques, why do I share my strategies with other retail traders? Um, uh, this is really why I do it. Um, we all know that time is not money. It's the most valuable resource on the planet. We can't get it back. We can't create more of it. Um, whereas with money, it, it can be replenished, right? So um, uh, th there's a big difference between time and money, right? And you often hear the saying, time is money. Well, it's really not. Um, and this is the reason that I trade because trading and helping others uh, uh, with my strategies and my adjustment techniques um, allows me to have more time to do the things that I love to do. Um, so I used to trade my time for money. I used to work a day job. I don't anymore. Um, I still work a lot, I'll fully admit, because uh, I'm running a hedge fund and, and two companies. But, um, but uh, as far as trading goes, um, it does uh, give me a tremendous amount of time that I wouldn't otherwise have um, by working you know, a nine to five desk job. Um, so now I, I really trade so I can have time. Um, and that's what we want for our members. That's what we strive for. Um, so for that reason, we put together a special package for you today for the Traders Exclusive event. Um, and it includes 12 to 15 trade alerts per month. So you get our top three alert services um, with an average of 12 to 15 new recommendations uh, per month. So you get an average of one trade uh, per week per service. Um, and the typical holding period for those is uh, 14 days. So they're short-term trades. Um, and a, a smaller percentage of cases, as I demonstrated on the session, um, we may need to make an adjustment to those trades where the time horizon might be extended, um, but the typical primary exit was uh, 14 days or less. Um, and we have an average 85% uh, win rate across our services going back since inception nearly um, uh, seven years ago. Okay, so re really, they've all been successful um, over the long term. And uh, as I mentioned in our put writing service, we've never had a net loss. We've been able to adjust out of any loss that we've had in that trade. Um, and uh, there have been 282 closed winning trades in that service going back seven years. Um, so that need, that's uh, not up to date. So it's, we're now sitting at about 282 on that one. Um, and, and these are the actual results from that service going back um, over the last five years, so 20 or six years, sorry. Um, so we're about six and a half years in, um, and we're actually doing well this year as well. Uh, and you'll see that if you had traded 10 contracts on every one of our recommendations, which again is about one per week, um, the, the results over the course uh, of these six years was over $134,000 per 10 contracts traded. Of course, this is all scalable. 
um, and uh, based on your account size, um, the position sizing, the number of contracts can be adjusted appropriately for your risk tolerance and account size. Um, so uh, really tremendously uh, successful service. This is kind of what uh, some of our alerts look like. Um, so we give you, um, this is one on the TLT, um, and it's an actual alert that we sent out to our members. Um, we give you the, the annotated chart with all the support and resistance levels, um, the exact entry instructions with strike prices, expirations, um, as well, well as credits. Um, this one on the TLT did really nicely. There was a, over a 19% absolute potential return and over a 495% annualized return. Um, this is a, an example of a stock alert, one we issued on Morgan Stanley at 52 a share, um, uh, when the stock was at 52 a share. share. Um, this one uh, that was sent out January 16th at the time uh, went up over $4 uh, per share um, in only 13 days. So again, with the stock alerts, you get the annotated chart, all the exact entry and exit instructions. Um, and this is an example of a credit spread, one on the uh, TQQQ. Um, where we sent out the alert to our members for a 54 cent credit. Um, the result on this one was an uh, absolute return of nearly 22%. This one we were, was uh, open for just 13 days, annualized return of over 616%. So that's what our alerts look like. Um, and again, you get access to these in real time. We send them all out after market hours, so you don't have to sit at your computer during the day and watch, watch for alerts. We send these out after market hours. Uh, if you have a day job, um, you know, uh, this is, uh, gives you a lot of flexibility uh, to get into the trades for the next day. Um, and they include easy to read instructions, including the annotated charts and order entry screenshots. And we include trade adjustments. So if at any point a trade needs to be adjusted, that's also provided in our bundle service. So you get 12 months of all three of our top alert services. Um, and again, that includes the uh, naked puts, the credit spreads, the iron condors and our stock alerts. Um, normally that bundle retails for $1,499 per year. Um, we're also throwing in the trade adjustments uh, retailed at 299 per year. Um, we're going to throw in our professional trading series online course. That's over 10 hours of content. So I ta taught you some of our uh, top options and adjustment strategies on the session today. We have many, many more, and we're going to give you access to the training for that um, for life, unlimited, um, and you can watch it at your leisure um, in our professional trading series online course. Um, we're also giving you access to our invitation-only Facebook group. We have uh, around 900 members who trade a lot of the same strategies um, and, and use a lot of the same adjustments that I've shared with you on our session today. Um, you're getting access to our member group for uh, $199 value. And also, um, you're going to learn all of our adjustment techniques to fix losing trades. Um, you can join us on our live trade sessions every Tuesday, as well as in our training uh, member forum. That retails for $900. And ultimately, we're here to help you guys be successful and consistent. Um, we del deliver all of these out after market hours. You don't have to day trade. Um, you don't have to sit in front of your computer all day. You get 12 to 15 real-time alerts per month, and we guarantee an 80% or greater win rate with adjustments. Um, and you get to learn to trade stocks, futures, options with consistency, which, of course, is very difficult to put a price tag on. But the retail price on our package is nearly $4,000. And for the Traders Exclusive Summit today, we're slashing that and taking 80% off and offering the entire year for only $497. So an 87% discount, it's only wow. available today. Um, by, by the end of today, uh, it will expire. Or if uh, the 20 seats that we're offering up today are taken, um, the 497 will go back to the 3894 retail. So you have an opportunity to take advantage of this today by going to altostrading.com forward slash bundle. Uh, and claiming one of the 20 seats at the 87% discount for everything you see here on your screen. So I wanna wow. thank you guys for joining today. I hope you got a lot out of it and I'll pass it back over to Sherry to see if there are any questions. Oh, thanks so much, Jeff. Um, I do have, Cheryl was asking um, if you could display that last slide again. And I did say that we're posting a replay, um, but you might be able to do that for her um, separately from this. Uh, yeah, which okay? slide? Which slide would that be? The last slide. Yeah, we can just... Cheryl, we might need to know which slide we're talking about here. We are really on short time now. Oh, she said the apple, please. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, we can do that for you separately. Um, if you want to give us, uh, shoot us an email, um, and I'll give you our contact information too. It's uh, support at altostrading.com. So you can shoot us an okay. email. I'm happy to do that for you. Awesome. Cool. Um, Lanny wants to know options on futures using micro mini size are those included 
Um, we uh, are not in, uh, in this package. It's our uh, put writer, iron condor, credit spread, and stock alerts. So options on futures are n are not in this service. Um, we do have a separate service for options on futures. Um, so if you are interested in those, you can reach out to us support. Uh, via support. Yeah. Support at altostrading.com. Um, I've got Boris would like to know what size account is required for this. A uh, good question. So the reason that we include multiple strategies is to give you flexibility to choose which strategies you want to trade um, and which uh, trades within the strategies you want to take. So you certainly don't have to take all of them. And of course, uh, to answer that question, it's largely dependent on your, your uh, contract size or your position sizing. Um, but I would say at a minimum, if you were to really trade all three services um, and take every single recommendation, um, at a very minimum, uh, five to ten thousand minimum um, account, but it could certainly be executed with a you know two thousand dollar account. If, for instance, you're only trading the spreads um, and uh, you know maybe uh, one or two contracts per recommendation, so it really is variable depending on how many trades you take and uh, how many of the strategies you uh, decide to play. So. All right, and um, Tapas has two questions, and Tapas, we may not have time for this answer, but you can. Um, email support at altos trading it's not alto it's altos yep. trading.com uh, but he wants to know do i need any specialized brokers uh no no this can be done with any uh broker that offers options trading all right and with that i'm gonna have to cut us off i'm so sorry thank you so much for great this. to be here this is great and everybody needs to reach out to jeff this 87 percent off is crazy um i wasn't aware i was dealing with a madman but <laughs> <laughs> we don't do it often just to let you know this is pretty rare so <laughs> <laughs> so anyway thank you jeff for joining us i really appreciate it that was a great presentation and i hope you have a wonderful rest of the day you too thanks sherry thank you all right all right um cheryl please do please do email him with those questions i'm sorry we didn't have any more time to go with that but our next speaker is waiting in the wings i'm going to um just give a quick um fausto i have two instances of you logged in so i don't know which one to make panelist uh, so uh, you guys figure that out for me. I'm chatting to you right now. Okay. That's the that's me. Okay. Um, could you change your name to just Fausto on the one that you're on, and then mm. I will figure that out because I can't change it from the chat. That's what if that's. I'm, uh, the I'm one that not the, that the good. One with the mic on. The one with the mic on is me. Okay. Let me see if I can find you. Hold on one second. Attendees, staff. There it is. Yellow one just logged out. On. Okay, there you go. All right. Okay. Um, can everybody see my screen? It says disclaimer right now. Uh, I want to remind everybody, Fausto, just one second, and I'm gonna. I will introduce you. I just got to do a little housekeeping. If you have to leave early, we have uh, the replay will be posted at tradersexclusive.com forward slash archived underscore webinars, with or without the forward slash at the end is fine. Um, we also send out an email from GoToWebinar so you can actually watch it while I'm downloading it and doing my business in the back end there um, before we post it up here on our website. And uh, you should also expect emails from our speakers because they're going to they're going to reiterate their special um, offers to you, and it gives you a chance to speak to them if you so desire. Now I'd like to introduce our next speaker is Fausto Puglisi. Is that right? Very close. Puglisi. But Puglisi. you did a good job doing it. A C. <laughs> it's got to be a C, not a Z. Okay. All right. Well, I have a weird maiden name um, that nobody could ever pronounce. So I'm very hyper into saying people's names properly. But anyway, I want to welcome Fausto from Cyber Trading University. He's going to talk to us about his favorite trading tools and how he uses them to spot breakouts. Fausto was one of the original day traders of the early 1990s and one of the first independent traders to take advantage of the direct access trading technology boom in 1987. He acquired a wealth of knowledge from years of hands-on experience, beginning in the trenches, working side by side with some of the most practiced and successful traders in the industry. 
After spending considerable time mastering the art and discipline of day trading, Fausto chose to start his own company to share some of his highly sought after wisdom. Fausto is the 12 time champion at the World Traders Challenge, and he's the author of How to Beat Market Makers at Their Own Game. And he recently started appearing on NASDAQ Trade Talks. Thank you for joining us. I sincerely appreciate you taking the time. And I know uh, everybody, you guys are gonna wanna pay close attention so that you don't miss anything. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. Could you just help me uh, so I could be able to share my screen? Yes, I oh, just need, go. now do you like to ask questions and see the chat on the fly? Absolutely. If you could do that, that'd be awesome. All right. Or do I need to give that to Greg? No, no, you can give that to me. Okay. And then if you could just. You good? I uh, see you. Good, good, good. And uh, the webcam, if everyone wants to see my ugly face. <laughs> yeah, you, all you got to do is, um, do I have to approve it? I think all you got to do is at the top of your screen, you should, the screen that you're sharing, you should be able go. to say share it. All right, perfect. There you are. Hello. Good, good, good. good. All right, everybody, so let's get started. So, so sorry we're running a little bit late, uh, but I'll get right into it. Um, like you said, uh, my name is Fausto, President Founder of Cybertrain University, and what I'm here to do today is going to talk about one of my favorite tools, how to use them and how to spot breakouts. Now, the big thing about being a good trader is you have to know how to play the game of trading. I've been doing this for a very long time. I'll do a quick little intro about myself and basically just get right into showing you level three, level four, and how to read tape reading and how to spot these breakouts by using things of how to see the future and not to focus morely on the past. Now, just a little quick little disclosure, just to let everybody know, it varies, varies students to students. I'm not gonna give anyone any guarantees. No promises, no warranties, and if anybody does, do yourself a favor. There's, you can't do that. So just let, just keep in mind, don't go out there and risk what you can't, uh, what you can't afford to lose, which is very important. Now, uh, what we're going to learn is we're going to talk about how to determine if the stock is what we call tradable, that you can get in and out of it. The, the biggest thing that we teach at Cybertrain University, and what I've learned over the 25 years, is you have to see and know how to stop losing money. That's the big thing. Everybody wants to learn how to make money. A lot of people like to talk about winners. It's not about that. You're going to lose in trading. So you have to know what we call the three T's, tradable, trend, and trap. We're going to talk about something called level three. We're going to talk about ECN books. We're going to talk about tape reading. We've got a lot of good stuff to cover. And believe me, it's not going to take that long. Um, but I'm going to ask questions. Uh, we, like I said, we only have less than 45 minutes. but at the end of this presentation, I'm going to give everybody the opportunity to come and join me for one whole week in this trading room so you can see everything that I'm going to show you. Now, this is actually, um, I'm actually a regular guest on NASDAQ. I'm going to be there tomorrow uh, at the NASDAQ Center. You can see me, I, you can watch these videos. NASDAQ actually hires me to come do presentations to teach you, the, the general public, how to trade on the exchanges because that is the only way you're gonna be successful. You have to understand how these systems work so you know why they go up and go down the way they do. Now, I love trading, it's a great job, pays a lot of money, but I see a lot more people lose more than they make because they just don't know what to look for and how to surround yourself with a team. Um, you can always uh, purchase my book on Amazon, How to Beat Market Makers at Their Own Game. Great, quick read, you know, but uh, like anything else, books don't talk back to you, and that's why we're here. Now, over the years, just to let you know, um, I am one of the original day traders. Now, day traders, what we look for is we just make our days pay. If you're a swing trader, if you're a forex trader, a futures trader, that's great, but let me just give everybody a little advice. If you've been doing it more than two to three months and you're not seeing consistency, you're not making money, you got two problems. Number one, you probably have a bad guru, uh, a mentor, and two, it's not for you. Doesn't mean you have to get out of the business, but I just want to let you know that if there's a lot of different markets out there, so you know, go out there and try a little bit of everybody's stuff. That's why we're here today, because we we're here to introduce ourselves. You're basically interviewing us and see if you get it, and you should try a little bit of everyone's stuff as you're here. Now, um, my parents always taught me very, you know, very wisely being first generation Italian is that if you want to be successful, you have to surround yourself 
with people that are very good at what they do. And you just they don't go out there and just take the content and figure it out on your own. You have to work with them. You have to trade with them. Just got to consistently be good at, at that job. Don't try to be the smartest person in the room. That's not going to work too well. Go out there and know you don't want to be the richest person in the room. That's how you succeed in trading. Now, I have two families here I want to introduce. This is my, uh, my lovely family, my wife, Debbie, my three sons, Alex, Max, and Lucas. And I have a second family here. So I'm a more of a family man. When I trade my traders, I look out for them. I want to help them. I want to succeed. You'll notice these people will just look just like you. Engineers, oil and gas people, military, uh, grandmas and grandpas. I mean, just basically everybody you could think of is just like you. Now, being a very good trader, you know, everyone's always trying to find out, oh, it's the tip of the day. What's moving? A friend told me to buy this. And somebody told me that. Uh, look at some pot stocks. Let's look at energy stocks, whatever it is. You know, at the end of the day, the reason why you're here is to make money. That's about it. You don't care what you trade. You don't want to know what you trade. You just want to, you're not going to sit there and talk about it. Hey, like, like I was talking to someone today that, you know, they say, oh, I made money in Apple. You know, I did well, but now like I keep trading Apple and I'm losing and losing and losing. I'm like, you know, there are over 25,000 stocks out there that are moving. Like, for example, I have a question for all of you. Um, did any of you ever just see the stock this week, RDBX? Did any of you see this stock today, RD, RDBX? No one saw it. No one saw it. Well, here's a stock. You could see it right here, right at the open at 9 o'clock. It ran from $4, $4 to $6. And you can go to our Twitter feed. We're live on YouTube every morning and on the afternoon. But here's a watch list. Basically, when we work with our traders, we show them how to buy it, where to sell it, what's going on. But that's not the point. The stock still went higher. We went from $6. Now we went to $11 on day two. Okay. So the stock continued to go higher. Now, why did the stock go up? How did I know it was going to go up? Where did you find it? Listen, the bottom line is there are a lot of stocks that are moving in the market. I don't have a crystal ball. Basically, what I teach my traders what to do is work off the big percentage gainers and losers. That's your volatility. That's your watch list. And then the, I, and you have to look and you have, just have to see which one out of all of them are going to give you the least amount of risk with the high amount of reward. Now, I run a professional trading room. I'm live every day. I have several, instru several instructors that work for me. We start from 7.45 in the morning to 4.30 in the afternoon Eastern time. We trade in the pre-market, during the market, and after market. And, all, and you can come in whenever you want depending on what part of the world you are. Maybe some of you are watching this as a recording. Maybe you, maybe, you know, cause maybe you live West Coast. Maybe you live in Singapore. I don't know where it is, but there's always an opportunity to go out there and trade. But the big thing about trading, it's not a full-time job. So for some of you that come out there and say, well, you know, I heard about day trading. I, I got a day job or I only could work one day a week. That's perfect. This is not a full-time job. And that's where people make their big mistake. Now. Not all tips are really bad, okay, honestly. But the thing is, if somebody ever gave me a tip on a stock and says, hey, look at this stock, I heard it's going to move up, you, it, it, it might be good, it might be bad. But the first thing I do is I look at and say, okay, well, listen, if you know something, then everybody else knows something. Let's go find out what the street's doing. So if you want to, if you want to trade on Wall Street, where you, or most of you are all on Main Street, you need to go where the money is. Now, I live here in New York. This is the financial capital of the world. I was trained by some of the best traders in the industry. Some of them live even across the street from my house, okay? Um, you're not going to beat these people. You could, you could think all you want, but you know what you can do? You can get the same tools that they offer, and you could just watch them and just do it like I was always taught. Just get the crumbs on the floor. Just be the ants. You know what I mean? That's not a bad thing. Great job. But let's talk about the tools and let me show you how you could take your trading and your style into a total different level where you stop working about the past and we're going to start focusing on the future. So let's go talk about something called AK Level 2. Now, um, let me get my little pointers out here so you guys can follow along so you can see my little dot. 
So here you have a level two system. Basically, you know, this is everybody, every brokerage firm offers it. I know a lot of people don't like to use it because it moves maybe too fast, whatever it is. And chances are you're probably trading a fast moving stock. But let's just talk a little bit about it, what we got here. So right here, you got the buyers. Oops, let me change my colors here. And you got the sellers. You got three columns, one, two, and three. You can see it better here, one, two, and three. So the first column is giving you a full letter abbreviation of an exchange like New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ Exchange, Archipelago, or you know, you have another, this, or, or a brokerage firm. Second column is giving you the, the price that, that that stock is trading at that exchange. And the third column is telling you how many shares are looking to be bought at that exchange. Now, everything here is multiplied by 100, okay? So you could see like 100 shares. Like, really? That's it? You know, like 24, 2,000? Like, really? Yes, that is actually the raw data of what's happening at the exchange. Now, what's the craziest part about this whole thing, fellow traders, is that you have a seat on the exchange. You could actually now see where all the buyers and sellers are, where you could not do that before. This is, and this kind of changed everything. Now, this is the issue. Some of you here have level two. Well, guess what? Level two is outdated. It's been outdated since the early 2000s, all right? Now, there's something better that's out there that you want to look at, and it's something called, oops, NASDAQ total view. Other word, uh, other word that we call it is level three. Now, does anyone here have total view? Just give me a yes or no on the questions, just out of curiosity. No one here has total view. Nobody out of every single person, we have close to what, almost like, I don't know, almost 100 people here. No one here has level two. Okay, guess what? That's not a bad thing, all right? I'm not going to hold up against you. You got book map for us. That's even better. We'll talk a little bit about that next, all right? So let me tell you what total view is. Now think about this for a second, fellow traders. I'm about to show you where you're going to see close to 70% of where all the buyers and sellers are in the stock. Now, think about this for a second. If you were able to monitor and see all the buyers and all the sellers, you get to see where Warren Buffett is. You get to see where BlackRock is. You know where all the high-frequency trades, the algorithms. How much smarter and better trading decisions would you make? Well, that's, where, that's why we're going to talk about NASDAQ Book Viewer. And like I said, I'm going to be there live tomorrow. I broadcast every, I do an event with them um, every several weeks to educate the general public how to use it. But I'm, you're going to get first dibs on it as of today. So let me explain how it works. Now, this, uh, let me get my crayons here. Oops. There we go. Okay. So once again, here are your buyers and here are your sellers. You got three columns. One, two, and three. Same thing like level two. The difference here than the one we saw prior is that you're seeing every single buyer at every single price level. Level two, you're only seeing the best buyer, which is this guy right here, and the best seller. You're not seeing all the buyers and all the sellers. So think how much more data and how much you're getting on this they're not on the other stuff. So this is going to lead into something even bigger. Now, remember, no matter if you're a swing trader, an investor, if you have a certain industry you like to trade, it has nothing to do with that. I'm here just to educate you that if you want to trade, you have to follow the orders. Because sometimes you'll be in a stock like, you know, I only trade high techs. Well, sometimes the high techs are not moving, you know? Like we're having a lot of energy stocks that are moving today. We're having a lot of stocks that got really crushed the last couple of months and then in, and they're making big comebacks. So there's a lot of different moving parts that, that come on with trading. Now, let me clear this out. 
And let me change the slide and show you where we're going with this. So a lot of us, I assume, I hope I'm right, a lot of you understand support and resistance levels, right? Okay. Well, you cannot have a support level unless the buyer's there. You can't have resistance levels unless you have the sellers there. Makes almost se common sense. So let's look at this example that I have right here. We're looking at a very basic chart, and you can see how the stock came down. And you notice how it stopped right here at $12.65. And it's, it hovered there for about almost an hour. It hit, it hit, it hit, it hit, it hit, it Never wanted to get past that number. Why? Why, why would it go to 12? Why did, why did it stop at 13? Why did it pick 1260? Well, if you look over here on the book viewer, you'll notice when you work, you look at, when you look at all the buyers out there, which is the bid, as you're working your way down, you'll notice that there's 185,000 shares looking to be bought at $12.60. Um, no wonder why the stock doesn't want to go down because that is a, not only a buyer like these people for 200 and 500, that is what we call an iceberg order. That is a major, major blood, big block order. So it makes perfect sense why the stock won't go down because you got a buyer there that's preventing it from going lower unless somebody sells it to him. Now, let's look at something else. What about resistance levels? Okay, here you have a stock that went from $2, started around 9.30 this morning, went straight up to a price of five bucks, and it stopped. And then it came right back down to four. Now, why did it stop at five? Oh, it's a whole number. Listen, forget about that. It has nothing to do with it. It all comes down to this. There is a quarter, there's a 215,000 share seller out there that's hovering at 515. Listen, you got 100 share sellers, 1,700, 2,000. Ladies and gentlemen, 250,000, 15,000 sitting there on the offer at that specific price. You could, you, could, you could use any indicator. You could use any philosophy. You could call any broker. It all comes down to this, buyers and sellers, okay? And with a big major seller out there, what do you think is going to happen? Listen, I did not invent this. This is not the Fausto indicator or whatever it is. This is how I was trained to be a market maker. You want, you want to trade a specific stock? A stock is moving? Oh, Bill from Goldman Sachs, that guy is the main trader. That, that's all he trades. And out of coincidental, the stock is moving today. I think I, we need to watch him. That's what I was told. Now, we're, that is like the primitive going back to the horse and buggy. Now we're talking about, you know, we're light years ahead of that now. We've got electric cars for crying out loud. Well, now you have access to the electric car business because the exchanges want you to learn how to use this stuff. So why not go out there and use the proper tools? Um, Mark, to answer your question, let, let me, let me kind of answer, kind of uh, be a little specific on that. If you really think that, Market makers and traders are hiding orders or there's some funny business. Do yourself a favor, quit trading. Don't take this the bad way. The only reason why I'm telling you, that's what my mentors taught me. You know what? These people are getting in big trouble. Yeah, some of them screwed around a little bit here and there. But if you really think that, oh, um, how do you know that's a real order? Oh, that's real, all right. And if it's not, when you come to my trading room, I'll find one. We'll use your money. And uh, let's see how you're going to like having about a half a million dollars worth of stock in your portfolio. All right. Now, could they cancel an order? Of course, you could cancel an order. You could change your mind. But unless all these people are in cahoots with each other, which I don't think that's the case, then you know what? That is something you'll see when you come into my trading room. Let's go over a couple more examples. All right. AMC. Okay, very popular mean stock. Maybe some of you people heard about it. Stock had a nice little rally. Stock is trending down, okay? Now, you ever go into a trade and you're losing money and you're like, oh my God, do I sell it now? Do I hold on? What, and this is a question to ask all of you in here. What do we need for the stock to stop going down? 
What do we need, fellow traders? Mark, Mike, Bill. Come on, guys. What do we need? Buyers, right? Buyers, right, Mark? What about you, Cheryl? Larry, right? We need buyers. Do you see a buyer on a chart? I don't see any buyers on a chart. There's only one place to see where those buyers are. We need to go to NASDAQ, to, uh, the total view book. And I'm working my way down. I'm like, holy crap, $16. You got 178,000 share buyer out there. 18 different orders are out there. Now, if I wanted to have a game plan, that is where I would say the stock should bounce. That's the guy. It's the only way it's going to support it from going any lower. And guess what? It went right to 16 and went right back up to 16.68. Do you ever feel sometimes like you're doing a trade and you feel like uh, somebody's watching you, right? Like I think you're on the wrong side or something. The, the, the thing is this. They're not watching you. You're just not watching them. Just watch what they do, and you'll have a game plan. I'll give you another one, American Airlines, okay? Stock's moving up, steadily up. You're thinking like, oh, making money. I love American Airlines. It's finally making a big of a bounce. Good traders have to have a game plan. And if you didn't see that 54,000 share seller out there that's sitting out there to get out, guess what? Boom. Now you go from you know, 1425 right back to where you start at 1360. Just because, you know, maybe you're counting some whatever you're using, but it just makes sense. Now, like I told all of you here, I'm going to invite every single one of you to watch me live, and not including myself, my instructors, and all the hundreds of traders in my room, that how we work together like a team, and we're going to find these stocks, we're going to make our days pay, and we're going to all be able to spot these iceberg out orders out there now listen there's no software out there that does it it's still done manually but we do have a couple of tools that could obviously help us with that but i'm going to save that when you get a chance to get in my trading room because it's these iceberg orders that will control the market now to one of you that mentioned earlier if you think level three is pretty cool you haven't seen nothing yet until we have level four level four is now going to be something more of a heat map where these are tools that we use that not only are we able to spot the numbers, but now we're able to find out how long the guy's been out there for. We can um, aggregate those orders with different exchanges. We can add, you know, orders from New York Stock Exchange, Philadelphia Exchange, the, the CBOE. So, because you might see an order on the NASDAQ, but you might not be on the New York. So now we're able to aggregate them and we could see, is the guy getting executed? Is guys getting filled? Like this example right here. You ever like thought the stock is going to bounce, it's going up, and then it comes back down? You think, oh, maybe it's starting to start to go up, and it keeps going down. Well, we teach something called a ladder effect. Did you notice that there was a seller out there, and he keeps lowering his offer, and lowering his offer, and lowering his offer, and then lowering his offer even more? I mean, look at those red bars. This guy is his guy right here for 31000 He keeps lowering it down. He says, ah, let me, I got to sell more. I got to sell more. I got to sell more. And here you are thinking like, my God, is this stock gonna, ever going to stop? Why does it keep going lower? It keeps getting these bounces, and then it just, I don't know, just stops and goes down. Because there's someone out there dumping stock, and you are not watching him. So, And if you're not watching him, guess what? He keeps coming back and he keeps selling more and selling more and selling more and selling more again. And here you are, you're at eleven, twelve dollars and you're sitting there crapping in your pants. So how the hell do I get down to ten fifty? Why didn't I get out a dollar earlier? Well, did you see the guy out there selling it? No. Did you follow the money? No. But if you want to go out there and use all these indicators, you know what? That's fine. But I could tell you this, it does not work for day trading at all. Zero. Because by the time those things move, they're a little late. And sometimes if you just kept things a little bit simpler, you'll be able to understand where to get in and out of these positions. And that's where it comes, comes down to it. 
So, um, looks like we're doing pretty good time. All right. So, um, the other big thing people always have is they try to look at some charts and they get a little nervous. They don't know where the big orders are. Um, they think these platforms that, that are very confusing. Believe me, they're not confusing. You just probably have all these bells and whistles open. And you really don't need them. A lot of these brokerage firms like to show off and tell them because they're trying to appease all different types of traders. But if you had something to keep it simple, you'll be able to understand why they go up and go down. But don't go out there and think you're going to be self-taught and figure it out on yourself. I don't think anyone here would want anyone to work on their loved ones who is self-taught to be in brain surgery. You know? Oh, I forgot. You got to get licensed to do that. Well, guess what? When I started this, you had to get licensed. Now you don't have to. And I think that, honestly, I think that's doing more damage than good. Because more and more people are losing money than ever, and they shouldn't have got into the trading if they got educated. I don't think they're going to be changing that rule because they're making too much money. But you know what? You people are here today are smarter than that. And I'm telling you, this is exactly how us market makers trade on Wall Street. Nothing really has changed other than you don't have to get licensed. You don't have to come here to New York anymore, and you don't, you don't have to pay $20 a ticket like I used to pay and split the profits. So this is why Cybertrade University has been endorsed and has been you know, featured on some of the biggest brokerage firms in the industry. Um, they dumped credit checks on us. They watched our traders. Uh, we, are, we have red carpet treatment for, and this just name a few. These are some brand name ones you might have seen. But you got to know how to play the game. And another thing that we also do with our traders is within the cyber group room in our professional trading room, we even had, we started pre-market, we started aftermarket, and we also do traders talk. We do a lot of content for our traders because the faster you learn how to play the game, the faster you'll be able to contribute to the room. Now, we also implemented another nice little change. If you haven't seen this in a while, I don't know if you're here for the first time or seen this before, but we also uh, uh, we added an alert service to your phone. So if you're not at home by a computer, you could still have access to your phone. You will we'll send you alerts. We'll let you know what's going on just in case if you're not around. Or let's say you're on the road, you want to get a hold of us, and you want to see what's going on in the market, you can access it right on your phone. Believe me, we, t we, we care about your trading. I hate seeing people lose money, and it's mainly because of ignorance, okay? But I know, like I said earlier, a lot of you here are smarter here today because you want to learn how to play the game. But learning how to play the game is not about making it. It's about stop losing it. So like I mentioned earlier, I want to invite every one of you to come watch all my traders, the hundreds of traders in my room, watch us instructors, and don't judge us on our winners, but judge us on our losers to see how few we have. I don't want to change anyone's style. I just want to show you how these things go up due to supply and demand, which will help you become a better trader. Now, this is the deal I'm offering everybody, okay? I'm not giving you a price. You pay me what you want to pay me. You name your price, whatever it is. So I just came out with this idea last, uh, we came out with this yesterday. I said, you know what? We used to charge, you know, $300, $10,000, $2. Listen, you, you, what you've learned today, you name your price, whatever it is, whatever you want to give to me. And basically, by you naming your price, what you want to give us that you think is fair, I'm just going to give that money. I'm going to give it to my staff and buy them lunch. And if you give me a lot, I'll even take them out to dinner. But you'll get the customer service. You'll get the support. You'll get the trading room. But I want to give you one week in my trading room. You just name your price what you want to pay me. That's it. Sounds pretty reasonable, right? So a couple of questions really quick I want to take. Um, does this strategy work for volatile markets? <laughs> Listen, if we have the volatile markets, we're bad at business. That's where it comes down to it. How much money you need to, uh, to get started? You don't need a lot to do this. Hell, we traded a few stocks today. Um, here's, one, here's one right here we did. Um, RVSN stock started right around, I don't know, a dollar seventy. It ran to two fifty in about thirty minutes. I mean, I'll take that all day. We traded Lyft today. Lyft did pretty well. Got destroyed. You probably saw that huge bounce. 
Um, this is pretty cool. There was a we uh, we watched this stock right here go from 23 all the way down to $20 a share. And you notice from 20 went back to 21. Nice dollar move. You know why it stopped at 20? Because there was a hundred thousand share buyer. Actually, it was 120 thousand on the bid. That's the only reason why. And guess what? If you were patient and you waited, regardless of the stock being down so much, but if you were there and you waited and you waited and you saw that big order and you bought it when he bought and you sold it when he sold, make a dollar, a thousand shares, a thousand bucks. Who doesn't want that job? Quarter million dollar salary. That's where it comes down to it. So these are all the benefits you're going to get and understand about trading. And like I said, what's the worst thing that could happen? You learn something. You know, that's the worst thing that could happen to you. So go out there, name your price. Let me, with that price, you're going to get access to my trading room. You'll get access to my instructors. You'll get access to, you know, to talk to us all over the phone. And then what we're going to do as a bonus, as a bonus, with all these things that you're going to get, the trading room, the workshops, all that stuff, we're going to, I'm going to actually pick up the phone and we're going to talk together on the phone. Okay. Think about it. When's the last time you ever spoken to anybody at a company in education? Like what invest interest do they have in you? My investor interest in you is that if you have it in you, well, I want to, I want to teach you how to trade so we could trade together. And if you don't have it in you, I'll tell you right now, I said, listen, we're not the right fit. So right now you're interviewing me after today, I'm going to start interviewing you. All you have to do is just name your price. And you know what? At the, and if you're not happy of our services, Whatever you gave us, I'll give you money back. It's a money back uh, guarantee. Now, um, any other questions? Uh, any other questions? We've got about two, three minutes. Uh, listen, Cheryl, whatever you want to pay, whatever you want to pay, I don't care. Whatever you feel is generous that you want to give, like I said, and at the end of it, if you're not happy, we'll give you money back. I know it sounds crazy because people always give you a number, but you know what? We, we did it yesterday. Um, half the people that attended my event said, you know what, I'll do it. The only thing was we will not accept less than a dollar. That's it. <laughs> All right. Uh, we got about, uh, about four minutes, I think, if I'm correct. Uh, you can actually go. Brokers, does, we, is that we right? We've been in your time, so you can go. How much time we have? Uh, we have not uh, at least 10 more minutes for you. Oh, 10 minutes. Okay, no problem. Yeah, because I think we ate into your time on. by 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, what worth uh, be the cost after the month? All right, so this is it, Tapas. Don't worry about that right now, okay? We're not going to charge you. We're not going to scam you into something after the subscription open. We don't. Play, I, don't I don't even know how to do that, okay? I don't even want. I wouldn't want no, no one to do that. I actually get pissed off when people do that to me. Um, don't worry about that right now. That's the least of your problems. Hey, listen. If I could teach you how to be a six-figure trader, I don't think you worry about paying a subscription later. But you know what? You're not going to know the value until I show you that other people are making money doing this. And if you're really qualified to do it, you know, a lot of people are not qualified. But if you're here today and you like what you hear, name your price. And we'll go from there. Um, like I said, just, uh, yeah, there's the link. Uh, someone gave it. Do we uh, have such a, a slim availability? Well, this is the deal. Uh, when you register, you'll talk to an education advisor. When you're ready to start doing it, you tell them. You, I mean, I would start immediately, but if you can't, start next week. You know, tell them when you want to start your trial, and then we'll get that up and running for you. Absolutely. Any other questions? So all these things you're going to get. The, uh, the morning trading. Morning, afternoon, we'll teach you how to find these stocks. You're going to get a Q&A workshop. Three, uh, you're going to be able to get Traders Talk archives. 20 new trial members will get a free coaching with me. Um, everything where I don't even care about the money, you just name your price. That's it. All right. So listen, um, I got to go. I, you got another presenter. I'll give you some guys some time to you know, uh, do what you got to do and get registered, get prepared. Maybe you want to hit the bathrooms, whatever. I don't know. I have to get ready and teach my students. At three o'clock, I'm doing a class right now. I'm going to trade the last hour going to the close. Looks like we're having a nice little action in the market, so I want to jump in with them. But, uh, but I'd like to thank you for having me here again. It's been always a pleasure to speak on your behalf, and I'm glad everyone here is, 
you know, uh, stuck around and listened in. Yes. Well, no, we all, we will. By the way, what I just showed you to answer your question, Tapas, you could use this for futures. You could use this for, for cryptocurrency. We teach a crypto class on this. Oh, yeah. You could do this for options. You know, you got to remember, it's the movement of the stock that makes an option move. You understand? So when, it, you know, if you want to be a good options trader, you got to know how to trade the stock first. You know, because when you find the stock, you're like, oh, crap, the stock's got great options. You know what I mean? Can't always wake up every morning and think you're going to trade Tesla options just because you can't afford Tesla. That's a poor man playing a rich man's game. You don't want to do that. All right. All right, traders. Thanks again. Thanks for having me. Good luck. And I'll see you all in the trading room and look forward to be back here. Thanks uh, for joining us. I appreciate it so much. Have a good day. All right. Our next presenter is coming up and I'm going to uh, I think I'm having a problem here for a second. All right. I'm here. Hi, just one second. I think you have to make me the presenter. Yes, I do. I'm going to introduce you very quickly and then hand it over. And I appreciate your patience. Um, the first presenter went over a little bit and, um, and I'm just really appreciating that Fausto finished right on time. I wanted to let everybody know if you have to leave, we do have a replay link that you'll get in your email. And you can also watch this replay at tradersexclusive.com. Uh, next up, we have John Thomas of Mad Hedge Fund Trader with Dow 240,000, here we come. That sounds really cool. John Thomas is a 50-year veteran of the financial markets. From the 1970s, he worked as the Tokyo correspondent for The Economist and The Financial Times. During the great Japanese bull market of the 1980s, he ran the Institutional Equity Trading Desk at Morgan Stanley. And in the 90s, he founded the first international dedicated hedge fund. Um, for seeing a major market crash and missing the adrenaline of the financial markets, he founded the Diary of a Mad Hedge Fund Trader in 2008. And followers of his trade alert service have earned a blockbuster return of 44.86% a year for the past 14 years. Wow. His publications, his publication is now essential reading for tens of thousands of followers in 137 countries. And Mr. Thomas, thanks for joining us. I appreciate it very, very much. So I'm going to make you the presenter. Okay. And do you like to have um, the questions on the fly or do you like them held until the end? Um, let's hold them till the end uh, so we know how much time we have left. All right, but do you ask questions and need interaction engagement? So you, do you need to see the chat? Um, yeah, have people put them in either the chat box or the question. Okay, all right. So I just gave you okay. organizers. Okay, I just gave you organizers so you'll be able to see them or I can come in and read them when you're ready. Okay, let me get the chat box open. Uh, okay, we have that. Uh, we have that. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, but it is in, it's not in your presenter mode. It's, not, it's nope. in your deck. Start the slideshow. Yeah, and how's that there looking? you go. It's perfect. Thank you so much. I'll be quiet now and you take it away. Okay, everyone. Well, thanks for joining me today. This is John Thomas, the Mad Hedge Fund Trader, talking about how we're going to get to Dow 240,000 uh, in 10 years. I know it's an outlandish forecast, but I have a very long history of making outlandish forecasts which come true, like Nikkei Dow going to uh, 38,000 by 1990. That one worked out pretty well. We got a 10 bagger on that one. So I'm broadcasting to you today from beautiful, sunny Silicon Valley, California, epicenter of the universe. This is where all the technology that is, is being created that will drive the uh, Dow to these incredible levels. 
And it's actually a lot easier to get there than you think, and I'll tell you why in a second. Uh, so take out your pen and paper to take notes. Uh, what I'm about to tell you is life-changing. Uh, and first, I'm going to take you on a little airplane ride. I have, oops, there goes the airplane ride. <laughs> Let's get it back. Uh, okay. Let's try that again. The good old technology. Okay, so I have 50. Why listen to me? Why listen to John Thomas? Well, I have 53 years of experience in the global financial markets, 10 years as the economist correspondent in Tokyo and later the White House, 10 years running the International Equity Division of Morgan Stanley, a little time out as a Marine Corps combat pilot in Desert Storm, 10 years running the first international dedicated hedge fund, five years fracking for natural gas in Texas, and now 14 years publishing the Diary of a Mad Hedge Fund Trader. I am one of a handful of founders of the modern hedge fund industry who is still breathing and still working. Uh, take my half century of trading experience and add it to your own. Learn from my mistakes so you don't have to repeat them. Believe me, over five decades there have been plenty. Oh, and if you ever need a ride in a hundred year old biplane, I'm your man. I'm one of the few people in the country who's able to fly this 100-year-old airplane. Okay, so uh, what's the secret to my success? Well, uh, I happen to have the Mad Hedge Profit Predictor or the uh, Market Timing Index. It's an artificial intelligence-driven algorithm that analyzes 30 different economic, technical, and momentum-driven indicators all day long. Uh, and hey, uh, Sherry, if you want to activate the video, uh, go ahead. Are you able to do that or should I do that? Activate the video? Uh, yeah. The, the link that you sent me? Uh, no, um, there's there's a little window in the presentation where it, it has my live uh, video feed going also. Fausto had it previously. Oh, that's your, uh, okay. So at the top of the screen that you're um, showing, you should be able to click on your web on your webcam. Yeah, I'm gonna to have to come out of this page. Um, yeah, I'm not I'm not seeing it. I'm gonna I'm gonna request your um, camera. Maybe that will come through to you. No, nope, it's not letting me. Yeah. Um. It's at the it's at the actual top of the screen that go to webinar it uses. Yeah, for I know, sharing. but it's, nothing's coming up. So I'm hovering Sorry all over that. the place and I'm not seeing any Zoom commands. So uh, anyway, okay. we'll forget about it for now. Um. Well, I could take it back and you could reshare and share your webcam first. Uh, no, that's okay. We'll just go ahead from here. Uh, okay, I apologize. I don't know since. Um, since you're already the presenter, it's not letting me ask you for a webcam. Send webcam request. I've just sent it. I don't know if it's going to show up for you. Yeah, no, they, they still haven't worked out all the bugs for um, Zoom, that's for sure. Well, um, on the GoToWebinar platform that we're on, usually the thing is at the top um, of the of the screen that you're sharing. Share your webcam, got it, okay. Uh, share my webcam. Uh, yeah, it's asking me to reconfigure the computer. Oh, well, <laughs> we don't want that. that one. Uh, anyway, um, okay. let's see. Uh -uh, now I can't get it off this page. Today, GoToMeeting is not cooperating. Okay, so we're going to have to come out again. Uh, go skip past the slide and start the slideshow from the current slide. There we go. Uh, so why do you need an algorithm? Well, why use a toolbox missing its most important tool? Algorithms have become so dominant in the market, you should never trade without one. 
It does the work of a seasoned 100 man research department in seconds. It runs real time and optimizes returns with the addition of every new data point far faster than any human can. Imagine a trading strategy that upgrades itself 1,000 times a day. Don't go to a gunfight with a knife. If you are trading against algos alone, you will lose. Algorithms provide you with a defined systematic trading system that will enhance your trading profits. And I'm not the only one using algorithms. Some 80 to 90% of all current trading is algorithm driven. Uh, this is three years of uh, performance uh, of our market timing index. And you can see lots of buys at market bottom, lots of sell signals at market top, buy, sell, buy, sell. It's like owning a printing press that knocks out $100 bills. So what happens when Goldilocks moves in? This is our trailing one year performance, 68.89%. That's what we have made since May 3rd last year to May 3rd this year. And you know, with a typical <coughs> hedge fund type performance, you don't get big drawdowns because people have stop losses that, that kick in very quickly. So you get big up moves, sideways, big up, sideways, up, down a little bit here. Um, and then a massive move up. So uh, we're just short of all-time highs right now. And in fact, probably by the end of today, we will be at a new all-time high for the year or up about 30% so far this year. Um, yeah, I see the market's just trying to digest this Fed announcement. Uh, and this is our average annualized return for the last 13 years, 44.36%. That is more than double the S&P 500. So if you wanna make double the S&P 500 with less risk, keep listening. Uh, what goes into the market timing index? Well, it's actually uh, 30 different indicators and I'll share a few of them with you. 50 and 100, 200 day moving averages across markets and industries, the volatility index, the junk bond, treasury bond yield, uh, stocks hitting 50, do, 50-day highs versus 50-day lows, McClellan Volume Summation Index, 20-day stock bond performance spread, stocks with rising versus falling volume, relative strength indicator, 12-month U.S. GDP trend, uh, which right now is down. Uh, in the case of uh, Schiller S&P 500 National Home Price Index, which is at an all-time high right now. And what's remarkable right now is the number of mixed indicators, you know, we have a whole bunch of positive indicators here like Case Scheller. <laughs> and we have a lot of negative indicators like the recent GDP figure. So if you're gonna to listen to me for the next half hour, uh, let me tell you who I am. Um, my family origins are very humble growing up as the oldest of seven children on a remote farm in Southern California. I lived the all American childhood playing little league baseball and becoming an Eagle Scout. There wasn't much to do in the old days in California but hunting, so I picked up a job as a paper boy for the Los Angeles Herald Examiner. I found the stock pages, bought IBM at 20, sold it at 30, and suddenly found a far better way to make money than delivering newspapers off the back of a bicycle. By the time I was 16, I earned enough money to fly to Europe. By the age of 17, I had visited more than 50 countries and spoke four languages. And one of the first newspapers I ever delivered covered the Kennedy assassination in 1963. Uh, I'm at UCLA, I majored in math and DNA research, which led me a job at the nuclear test site in Nevada. Their yield didn't mean interest paid, but millions of Russians killed. I didn't see much of a future in that, so the government sent me to Southeast Asia for a few years of research, where I learned to fly and jump out of perfectly good airplanes. There I advised the militaries of America's Asian allies. Uh, as the war wound down, I became a foreign correspondent for The Economist magazine in London. When they learned I had a math degree, they switched me over to covering the Asian economy and the stock market. Ta-da, stock market. And after 10 years of government service, I got this uh, batch of medals, which I trot out once a year for uh, Veterans Day, which is coming up. Um, as a foreign correspondent, I covered China during the Cultural Revolution, was the America, first American reporter to visit North Korea since the Korean War, and covered the rest of the continent all the way to India. 
Uh, I quickly figured out you didn't have to be that smart to make money in the stock market. So I got into the industry, joining Morgan Stanley. After 10 years there, I started my own hedge fund. And that's me losing the All Japan National Karate Championships. Never enter a karate final with a broken wrist, which I did. I rapidly became the top performing hedge fund of the 1990s, eventually bringing in a 1,000% return in a decade. Then the money really started to pour in. It's an understatement to say that when your income goes from the thousands to the tens of millions, that has a really big impact on your lifestyle. Uh, I sold my hedge fund in 2000, retired to going to the oil and gas industry. After making a killing there, I missed the stock market and started the diary of a mad hedge fund trader in 2008. I now spend my days pursuing my first love, finding winning trade alerts, but now I do it from my three mansions in San Francisco, Lake Tahoe, and Zermatt, Switzerland. And I've quit turning millionaires into billionaires. There's far more <coughs> satisfaction leveling the playing field for the average guy and teaching him how to trade, and that includes you. If I can take a $50,000 account and turn it into 500,000, that is more job satisfaction than I could get anywhere else. Uh, every silver lining has a cloud. This is my 2020 tax return. Showed I had to pay 8.2 million in taxes on 20.6 million in trading income. Ouch. Uh, I just thank goodness I can pay that amount not having it affect my lifestyle. In the little free time I have left, I pursue vintage uh, flying uh, vintage aircraft on weekends. If you see an old plane flying loops over San Francisco or London these days, it's probably me. Uh, the ultimate luxury, of course, is to give to those who need it. As a Marine Corps veteran, I volunteer for grief counseling for widows and orphans, and I'm a major donor to wounded warriors. When wildfires hit California, I visited the main evacuation centers and handed out $10,000 worth of Target gift cards. So 2022 is looking even better from here on. U.S. economy will grow 8% year on year. U.S. company sales will increase by 15%. Profits will explode by 20%. The operating leverage of U.S. firms is the highest in history. COVID has peaked and has gone practically down to zero. Time to load this, the boat with stocks is coming. <coughs> there is a method to my madness. Bond prices have peaked and interest rates have bottomed. We are now in a multi-year bear market in bonds and the greatest short selling opportunity of the decade. And in fact, about two thirds of all of our profits this year have been from selling short the bond market. And we can teach you how to do that. Uh, and the rest have come from selling short technology stocks. It really has been a short selling dream come true this year, like shooting fish in a barrel. Inflation plays are making a big comeback now, like gold, credit cards, commodities, and industrials. Keep your big tech stocks as outer year earnings are being wildly underestimated and actually benefit from rising interest rates because they all have such gigantic cash balances. Uh, tech always comes back. I calculated that a 1% increase in interest rates increases uh, Apple's net profits by $2 billion. Yeah, it's that much, possibly $2.5 billion. US markets are the best home in a bad neighborhood and the only safe place to invest. Bitcoin will remain in the doghouse as long as interest rates are rising and small tech is falling. And if you're wondering why I'm having such a good time in this picture, it's because I'm flying a P-51 Mustang. And if you don't know what that is, this is my friend Geraldine, uh, a World War II fighter uh, from Europe. Uh, global economy, inflation is soaring, 18.5% is our last print. We get an update next week. That's a 40-year high. GDP is dropping down 1.4% in Q1, although you'd never know it by looking at the jobs market. Fed has declared war on the stock market by threatening four back-to-back -back 50 basis point uh, rate increases and accelerated quantitative tightening. We just got uh, the first of those 45 minutes ago. Used car sales are taking a hit as affordability becomes an issue. Producer price indexes are rocketing 11%. Weekly jobless claims are now down to 480,000. That is a 40-year low. 
also saying that the next recession that the market is predicting isn't going to happen. No way, Jose, not with these kind of numbers. A uh, seminal investment theme of our time is, of course, technology. Typically, tech has six months corrections uh, at least once a year, and this is one of those. We're actually five months, uh, let's see, we got yeah, five months into a six month correction right now. So that's why I say get ready to load the boat. The time is coming. Since World War II, tech has rocketed from 1% of the stock market to 27%, and it's on its way to 90%. But now it's working off a severe overbought condition. Eventually, all companies will become tech ones or cease to exist. Over 50% of new retail sales have been online in 2020, with one company, Amazon, accounting for half of the growth. And that has recently accelerated. Uh, the earnings of tech companies are growing at double the rate of non-tech ones, and profit margins are growing exponentially. The technology sector has been the top performer since the 2009 market bottom, and will continue to do so for the rest of this decade. Uh, these are the must-own sectors in tech. They include AI, cloud, cybersecurity, autonomous driving, digital commerce, digital infrastructure, big data, 5G, uh, microprocessors and GPUs, semiconductor manufacturing equipment, fintech, smartphones, blockchain, and quantum computers. And no, I did not draw up those equations. As far as I can tell, it's complete nonsense. <laughs> so here we are back to the bottom. I updated this yesterday, and you can see we've been chopping in a range. We're right at the very bottom of it. I think worst case, the market drops 4% more to an S&P 500 of 3,800, and then we start a, uh, a multi-year uh, bull market after that. So the only question, a 50% chance we bottomed on Monday at 407, and 50% chance we still make a slightly lower low at 3,800, then it's off to the races. So start drawing up those lists of things to buy right now. And by the way, I can help you with that. Uh, so we run barbell portfolios, half of the money's in big tech, half is in domestic recovery, including railroads, airlines, cruise lines, couriers, steel companies, banks, uh, construction, credit card companies, hotels, casinos, and online ticket sales. Uh, NASDAQ, again, has already broken to a new low, having a good day today, but you know it could go down another 10%, entirely possible. But then the next move is to 15% by 15,000 by the end of the year, up about 25%. Uh, Microsoft trying to double bottom here uh, at 270. We're targeting 400 by the end of the year. And notice how the cream of the crop, the best of the best, are hardly going down. And of course, that's Microsoft and Apple. Apple is here. It's barely gone down. We, we got down to... 155 on Monday, but uh, I expect 150 to hold, and after that we go to 250 uh, by the end of this year. Uh, Amazon, first three trillion dollar company, um, and again uh, it's <coughs> also broken down to a new low, but probably won't go down much more. Something you want to start accumulating here for the long term. Alphabet also. Uh, What's the first thing you do when you think a recession is coming? Answer, cancel all your advertising. Well, Alphabet accounts for 92% of the advertising market online. So obviously they're taking a, a, a hit here, but uh, I think it's part of a final cap capitulation sell-off. Facebook's been absolutely slaughtered. Uh, they're continuing their bottoming out process, looking for $300 in Facebook by the end of this year. Salesforce also has broken down, looking for slightly lower lows and then a target of $300 by the end of the year. So you can see in all of these, there's major double digit returns uh, to be had uh, if you get in right around here or slightly lower. Second half of the barbell uh, bets on a massive domestic global recovery to continue into 2023. Upside potential uh, for recovery stocks is far greater than for tech. Some of these have not moved for five or 10 years. Focuses on economically sensitive cyclical industries. Makes a great counterweight to high growth technology stocks 
we could spend all of the next two years rotating between these two groups. So Boeing, one of the favorites on the domestic uh, recovery side, they're getting record orders for new airplanes uh, and the stock has had a new low for the year. So go figure that one out, but we think Boeing can make it back up to $300 by the end of the year. Uh, banks, uh, again, getting hit hard with recession fears. When uh, you have recessions, default rates on loans go uh, go up because interest rates are going up. Uh, but we're very close to a, a buy entry point on this one. So uh, I think we can get back to $200 a share on JP Morgan. Uh, Visa, one of the greatest inflation plays out there. Uh, you. Uh, as companies raise prices, that goes straight into the Visa credit card processing. Uh, and they just announced spectacular earnings, so I wouldn't mind getting into Visa right around here. Union Pacific, any economic recovery means moving lots of big stuff, uh, and Union Pacific does that better than anyone else. Federal Express, uh, again, uh, same argument as uh, Union Pacific, except they deal with small packages. Uh, and again, I expect a major recovery in this stock too, looking for $300 a year in FDX by the end of 2022. And Berkshire Hathaway, one of my favorites, uh, I'd be buying right around here. Uh, we, um, uh, it's the natural barbell stock. Half, half of their stocks are domestic industrials and banks, and they also are the largest share of Apple. So you get major exposure to both uh, sectors essentially creating their own barbell. Bonds absolutely in free fall. We've had the worst bond sell-off in history in the first quarter with yields soaring to 3.02% on the 10-year overnight. Mortgage refi is down 67% year on year thanks to a 30-year fixed rate mortgage that is top 5%. <coughs> first seven rate hikes are in the market, but the following five aren't. Final target is 3.5% an overnight rate in a year. Yes, that's what you may be getting on your overnight bank deposits, as hard as it may uh, seem to believe. U.S. national debt is topping 30 trillion. That's never good for bonds. Sell any six-point rally in the TLT for a short play. Uh, we can get all the way down to 105 or even 100 by the end of this year. By the way, we've already dropped 39 points in the TLT from the November high to today. Uh, here's the TLT uh, for the last six months, and you can see we got up to 155, or just short of it here, got down to a low of 117. So this has been a fantastic play. And you can see these blue boxes show where the buy and sell indicators are uh, give, uh, produced by our market timing index. Uh, Ten-year Treasury yields, yeah, up to 3.02. Foreign currencies, of course, rising interest rate means that currency will be the strongest currency in the world. That certainly has been true for the U.S. dollar for the past year. Uh, Ukraine war has crushed the euro. Commodity currencies taking a break, like the Aussie and the Canadian dollar, on the commodity sell-off. Russian ruble bounced back on oil pricing and rubles, capital export bans. Currency with the fastest appreciating inter, uh, interest rates always does best, and that's the greenback for now. Long term, the dollar fundamentals are still, are still poor with all our uh, debt, but you know, uh, a dollar short could be the new 10-year trade, but not yet. So stand aside for now, there are better fish to fry. <coughs> There's the UUP, a dollar basket. You can see our buy signals from our algorithm kicked in here and here. Uh, this is the 20 year chart uh, for the Aussie dollar. And we expect it eventually go one to one to the US dollar because they're a major commodity exporter and long term we're in a commodity super cycle. Uh, energy obviously got a wartime boost. Biden's been trying to fight high prices by waiving ethanol rules and opening up the strategic petroleum reserve for 1 million barrels a day. Uh, refiners have been limited to selling 15% uh, ethanol blends to cut carbon emissions. That is out the window. Uh, Ukraine war will keep prices high as long as the war continues. Watch out for the Putin resigns headline or the Putin declares victory headline 
which could take the oil down $50 overnight. Avoid all energy plays like the plague. It's the new buggy whip industry as the U.S. decarbonizes. Uh, here's oil for the last six months. We see possibly a double top setting up here at 130. Then it rolls over and dies. It eventually makes it back to $10 where it was two years ago. Uh, and you can see this downtrend in oil has actually been going on for 22 years. Um, we got this uh, last peak here in 08, a lower peak uh, this year. Uh, and that is a lo very long-term double top, which should kill the industry, uh, or at least force it into other activities. Precious metals are in a new uptrend uh, as a flight to safety assets, also getting a bit as a commodity. Uh, many analysts are now raising their targets for the barbarous relic now that Bitcoin has utterly failed to provide protection against absolutely anything. War is inflation, economic slowdown, pandemic, Bitcoin has fallen in every case. Silver is the bigger and better long-term play as solar and EV demand is soaring. <clears throat> See, we have a little uh, sell-off going on here, uh, but I expect it to this bottom to hold and for us, uh, us to go to new all-time highs, possibly as high as $3,000 an ounce by 2023. Barrett Gold, close to new all-time highs. Uh, the Silver Trust, close to all uh, to highs for the year. Uh, so don't play with matches. You could probably do okay just buying all the stocks I mentioned and forgetting about them. Uh, however, the reality is that the conditions for these companies change every day. They're all viciously competing, trying to put each other out of business. You don't get daily updates on the fundamentals. You could easily get wiped out. Today's big winner could instantly become tomorrow's loser. That's why you need someone like me to guide you through the thicket to avoid an out of the blue blow up. I gained financial independence for life and so can you. All of this can be yours. Discover how to make $1,000 a year in extra income. Go from complete beginner to seasoned pro in weeks. Learn how to quit your day job and trade for a living full time. Trade from anywhere, anytime. Supplement your retirement income with the satisfaction of booking winning trades by the hundreds. Harsh truth is you really need my help. Help, <laughs> you don't want my health right now. I've got the worst cold. The majority of individual traders lose money. They lack the correct training and discipline to succeed. Most broker research suffers from grievous conflicts of interest. Wall Street is all about moving money from the uneducated to the educated. The easy solution to that problem is to get educated. Fidelity did a 20-year study and learned that their top performing investors were dead people. Why did dead people do so well? Because they never sell. Uh, you need a real pro to guide you through the market maze. The market is not monolithic and 95% of it can be completely ignored. You just need me to tell you which 95% can be ignored. There are a few great sectors, a lot of awful ones. You can earn 10 times return on the great ones, but get wiped out by the losers. Let a 50-year veteran steer you to safe waters. Let me sit next to you and guide your hand on every winning trade. Bill was a struggling tobacco farmer in Virginia who wanted to supplement his fading agricultural income. After uh, making 3.4 million with my trade alerts, he still farms, but now he's growing grapes in California's Napa Valley for the high-end wineries. Richard made millions religiously following my trade alerts. He now spends his time in, in retirement restoring vintage aircraft and flying them along the California coast. Greg turned 100,000 into uh, 3.4 million, yeah, 3.5 million solely on my trade alerts. He bought a new home in Orange County uh, California with Tesla solar panels, Tesla power walls, and a Tesla Model 3, and still had enough money left over to send three kids to college. Boy, is he one happy camper. Uh, so what do we do about all this? Well, stocks, you want to sell rallies, bonds buy dips, commodities buy dips, energy stand aside, currencies buy the U.S. dollar dips, and precious metals buy dips. If you are not up 68.89% in the past 12 months as I was, you are reading the wrong newsletter or following the wrong trade mentoring service. 68.89% uh, in a year and 44.36% average return for the last uh, 
uh, 14 years. And if you wonder why uh, the average over the long term uh, has been so uh, low, uh, it's because we only started using our market timing index about four years ago, and it doubled our performance. You get those kind of numbers, you get to do things that other people don't get to do, like take the Queen Mary from New York to England, then take the Orient Express from England to Venice, Italy. Once you go to get into Venice, you can go island hopping in your own personal helicopter. Here's the very long view, and here's where the big money will be made. The 2000s and the 2010s were the hard decades for making money. The 2020s and the 2030s will be the easy ones as a global demographic wave brings on a new golden age. 85 million millennials will become big spenders over the next 15 years, while 80 million baby boomers drag on the economy fade from the scene. That will create an economic boom that will last another decade starting in 2021. Uh, are you ready for a replay? The last time we had that kind of demographic tailwind, the Dow average went up 20 times. Okay, let me disconnect this. Um, in 18 years, are you ready for a replay? Um, if we get that kind of performance, that 20 fold return, that takes us up to 120,000 by 2027. And in actual fact, because of accelerating technology, we can do a lot better than that. And if you think I'm smoking California's most product, popular product, think again, we're already two thirds of the way there. We're here right now. Uh, so we only need another quadruple, you know, to over seven years uh, to get the same kind of performance that we got from 1982 to 2000. Except this time it's different. Technology is hyper accelerating on all fronts simultaneously. The pandemic has greatly sped up the rate of change. Development of functional quantum computers <laughs> means that quantum computational ability is about to increase a trillion fold at no cost. The world's major computational challenges will certainly be uh, solved. All major human diseases will be cured in 10 years. Needless to say, barbell stocks dominate in this scenario. So who will tell you how to play the, the next 208,000 Dow points? Sit with me, John Thomas and my global trading dispatch. Discover how you can tap into the top performing trade mentoring service in the, in the industry, up 68.89% in a year. Follow my research and market beating trade alerts and you will rake the profits in. We trade single stocks, options, and ETFs for global equities, bonds, foreign exchange, energy, commodities, and precious metals. Uh, this is a typical trading month, uh, 10 out of 11 trades made money. You can see we bought the S&P 500, made 16%, sold short treasuries, made 8%, bought the Russell, bought Amazon, bought Apple, and uh, it really is a money machine, uh, and I can make this available to you. Just a matter of time before barbell stocks break out to new all-time highs. Watch this space melt up going into the end of 2022. Get ready to start reeling in those whoppers with Global Trading Dispatch as your guide. Uh, here's how a, a, a typical trade alert works. Uh, when Tesla was at 200, our algorithm spotted an opportunity for an upside breakout. So we sent out a trade alert, and this is what it looks like. Buy Tesla at two or two or best. Uh, and uh, for a $10,000 exposure, you needed to buy 49 shares. Uh, it went up 63% in uh, 20 trading days. So what do we do? Uh, did we just pat ourselves on the back? No, we send out another trade alert to sell. Uh, and on this particular trade, uh, we made $7,206, sorry, $7,203 in 20 trading days. Uh, and then we kept going back in. We didn't forget about Tesla. Every dip we kept buying through the rest of the year, we were buying it all the way up to about 600. So here's our uh, uh, Mad Hedge 10 baggers from last year. Uh, we got Zoom, uh, went up 10 times. Lamb Research, up 10.6 times. NVIDIA, up 16 times. <coughs> Uh, Square up 25 times, Moderna up 40 times, 
and of course the granddaddy of them all, a Tesla of 295 times. With my Mad Hedge Global Trading Dispatch Service, you get instant trade alerts and add up market sweet spots, about 200 a year, and all the reasons to execute them. That averages out to about one a day. Live by weekly strategy webinars with an interactive Q&A, special reports on urgent investment topics, invitations to strategy luncheons around the world. I have already set up my uh, uh, London, San Francisco, uh, and Zermatt, Switzerland uh, lunches for this summer. More educational videos and webinars than you can consume in a lifetime and access to my 14-year database. This is the one-stop shop. Learn all you need for every level. For individuals who want to understand what is happening with their retirement funds, for people who want to learn how to trade for a living, get the financial education of a lifetime. It's for smaller institutions and financial advisors who can't afford an in-house research department. Uh, so this is our uh, daily newsletter in your inbox every day before the market opens, Global Trading Dispatch. This is Mad Hedge Hot Tips, uh, also in your inbox every morning, the five most important things <coughs> that happened today and what to do about them. And you also get my book, Stocks to Buy for the Coming Roaring Twenties. That's why I'm not going to charge you for this service. I'm not going to charge you $100,000. That's what I charge my big hedge fund clients, and they're uh, happy to pay because I make them millions of dollars. And I'm not going to charge you $10,000. That's what I charge my concierge clients who get my personal cell phone number. And I'm not going to charge you $3,000. That's the full price of what I'm offering you on my website. Uh, creating this product cost me millions of dollars with the best customer service in the industry. Running it cost me millions more. Six months for just $997. It's the deal you can't refuse. It's a 66% discount. It's a limited time offer. We only take 25 new subscribers at a time. So it's first come, first serve. Just click on the chat box on the right and uh, Sherry, go ahead and put the link to our sales page. Uh, in the chat box uh, so people can access our dedicated sales page. All right. Uh, let me make the money for you to pay for your subscription. You make the trades, discover how an experienced hedge fund manager finds and exploits the best sweet spots in any market. Uh, six months for just $997. Buy now and you'll instantly receive a trade alert with an extremely high probability of success that you can execute immediately and make some of the most serious money in your life. Don't leave good money on the table. Uh, so let's go flying again. When you make millions of dollars for your clients, you get a lot of pretty interesting invitations. $5,000 cases of wine, lunches on super yachts, free tickets to the Olympics, and dates with movie stars. So it was in that spirit that I made my way down to famed beachside community of Malibu, California, to meet long-term Mad Hedge follower Richard Zeiler. Richard is a man after my own heart, plowing his millions in trading profits into a ground-up restoration of a 1929 D4D biplane. This particular plane is quite famous because it was featured in a 1930 war movie called Hell's Angels, which won an Academy Award. However, Richard had to buy another 20 travel airs just to get the parts he needed to return this one plane to flying condition. The modernized plane has a 300 horsepower engine, carries 62 gallons of fuel, and you can see here we're buzzing the surfers over Malibu. Since I'm one of the few tailwheel qualified pilots left in America, Richard was happy to let me have the plane for an afternoon where me and my kids buds the surfers. Let me make millions of dollars for you as well as I have done for thousands of others over the last 14 years. I look forward to working with all of you. Let's uh, a second, we'll try and... Uh, well, I seem to be stuck on this one page, so. It doesn't like your flying. Yeah, this hasn't, it doesn't ha this hasn't happened before. 
Maybe it's a go-to-meeting thing. Um, it probably is a go-to-meeting thing. Yeah, let me come out of this, go to the last page. Did you get the link uh, to the yes, sales sir. page? Yes, sir, I posted it. Okay, so uh, good thing I know my, around, my way around uh, PowerPoint. No, 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 wrong, wrong one. I, I, as I say that, I then blow my current slide. That is always the way, right? I know. Okay, this is the actual airplane right here that I was flying in the earlier slide. You can see this plane up above has a camera on it, which they used to shoot the movie. Uh, and they also had dummy machine guns uh, to use in the filming. So six months for just 997. Let me show you how to make the money. Uh, to pay for your own subscription. Uh, and there is the link to the chat box. And I think we have uh, three more minutes. And let me just check my store and <laughs> see if um, anybody else uh, has come in. We have Rodney from Sydney, Australia, just uh, purchased. Thank you very much, Rodney. Uh, check your inbox uh, uh and execute that trade alert because the market is still open so you can execute now uh, and if you can't find it look in your junk folder and that's usually where they end up with brand new subscribers uh we have jay from st petersburg florida who's just come in we have karen from cody wyoming um oh mark oh market up 700 I like i like kind of like that berkshire just by me mentioning it it went up five dollars <laughs> I'd like to think. Oh, my uranium plays are doing well, and uh, Tesla is doing well. I'm having a great day here. Uh, okay, let's see who else we've got in. Um, let me get my inbox open. Okay, we have uh, Adam from Durham, South Carolina has just come in. Uh, we have John from Douglas, Georgia. Let me open another one here. Wilson from Enterprise, Mississippi. Uh, Frank from Columbus. Do you have any uh, questions you want to ask? We still have a minute to go. We have one here. It seems to be very, very important from VJ. He wants to know if your daughter finished the course to become an Eagle Scout. Uh, she did. Uh, <laughs> she became one of the first Eagle Scouts in the country. And tonight they're having a dinner in San Francisco celebrating all the new Eagle Scouts. Oh, wow. And let me That's tell you, it's really handy having a daughter who knows how to start a fire, uh, do first aid, and pitch a tent and throw That's an exciting. axe. That's a big deal. Yeah, the girls were only allowed to join Boy Scouts two years ago, two and a half years ago. Yeah. Is there a minimum trading account size required? Is uh, asked by David. You know, we have people trading anywhere from $500 accounts from dorm rooms to $20 billion accounts with big hedge fund traders. Uh, nice. So uh, you can trade in one contract for us. You know, one position would be $400. <laughs> if you do something like a call spread in the options for $400. So yeah, there's really almost no minimum on this. And John is asking, how much will you charge after the first six months? Same. You're grandfathered for life at this price. Sweet. All right. Okay. Um, I, think I also have one, one more question. Do you still like copper stocks? Oh, copper is just getting started. Um, you know, if you can get Freeport McMoran on a good, good day, um, uh, it was trading around. Well, I can tell you right now, it's. Uh, Let's see. It's at 4092 right now. I expect it to go up to 100 in the next two, two years. There's a massive global short squeeze about to happen in copper as annual uh, EV production goes from uh, 1 million cars a year to 25 million year, a year. Wow. That's what's going to happen. Each electric car needs 200 pounds of copper. So world copper production has to triple in the next 10 years, or the price has to go up. And, and I think that will eventually be the will probably happen. <laughs> What's that? 
both will probably happen, right? Uh, yeah, I've been driving Teslas for 12 years now, and uh, my last Tesla, I can sell it more today than I bought it for three years ago. Oh, I'm sure you can. Yeah, because there's a one-year waiting list to get a new Tesla. Wow. Wouldn't you love to have a business where there was a one-year waiting list to buy your products? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank well, you very much for inviting me and uh, look forward thank to working you for with you. with us. I really appreciate you being with us. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. All right. And that was uh, a wonderful presentation from John Thomas of the Mad Hedge Fund Trader. I'm going to switch over now to Adrian Togrei of Trading on Target is waiting patiently to join us now. Um, she's going to be talking to us about she's with trading on target i probably said that sorry um all about losses um she's a trader success coach she's internationally recognized um, as an authority in the field of human development for the financial community her 13 books on the psychology of trading includes the winning edge series one through four and trader secrets They've been highly praised by financial magazines. Adrian's public seminars and private coaching have achieved a wide level of recognition and popularity, as well as her television appearances and keynote addresses at major industry conferences. Adrian, thank you for being with us. Let me just see. Hmm. Thank you, Sherry, for having me. Uh, can you put my slides up? I actually will make you the presenter mm -hmm. and you'll need to share your screen let's okay. see and do you like to have questions on the fly or do you like them to be held until the end i'd rather they be held until the end all right okay so i've made you the presenter and you should i can see your screen but it it looks like is it full screen uh here there you go good well thank you for having me and thank you for the people that are in the room that uh, are staying till the end to listen to what i have to offer i've been working with traders since 1989 traders brokers investors other high achievers and i tell you one thing there's only one percent of the people in the trading business that seek out a coach for the psychological part of trading. And maybe by accident that only 1% make it to the top of this business. So I'm sure psychology has a lot to do with this. It's been said that good traders know how to generate profits but that great traders know how to handle losses. Those of you who have traded for many years know the great truth to be found in this bit of market wisdom. Even novices know that the disposition of losses is much more important than the ability to generate profits. Naturally, the ability to take losses well without the ability to produce profitable trades is still a losing proposition. However, in comparative terms, the trader who can generate reasonable profits while knowing how to cope with and limit losses is the trader who will consistently outperform most others. Neurolinguistic programmers such as myself tell stories as examples of what we're teaching. Sometimes a simple story can drive a point better than a lesson or a statistic. And by the way, NLPers, uh, are modelers of success who pass models on to those who are not as successful. A trader by the name of Beverly had the kind of life that most of us would envy, sort of like the guy that just spoke. She never experienced hardship and the minor losses in her life didn't hang on to taunt her when she became a trader. 
Beverly worked at the Twin Towers. After 9-11, this incredibly profitable trader could not deal with even the smallest loss of her trading. All losses that haven't been dealt with effectively in your life will affect your trading. Losses are inevitable. Inasmuch as losses go with the territory of trading, they're unavoidable, inescapable. There's no trading system, method, technique, or approach which avoids losses entirely. The more trades you make, the more losses you'll have. The longer you trade, the more you'll be exposed to greater probability of inappropriate management of losses. The effective disposition of losses should ideally be the beginning in the beginning a total mechanical procedure. However, due to the fact that many trading approaches don't have mechanical rules for taking losses, there's always a danger that losses will not be cut short. This is precisely where trader personality comes to play. It's probably true there are born losers. And while it's true that there are specific personality traits associated with born losers, knowing these traits won't necessarily help us. By now, all but the most uninformed of traders are aware of the qualities that are important to trading success. But understanding the inner workings of certain trading behaviors may be, depending upon your orientation to the psychology of trading, essential to positive change. If you're a trader, you've experienced loss. The trick is in recovering from that loss, quicker, stronger, wiser. The alternative is to become so frightened of future losses that it impairs your trading, creating bigger and more painful losses, or to become pessimistic and depressed and lose confidence and hope. I worked with Beverly on reframing her connection to loss she had of friends and colleagues. We also worked on transforming the terror of almost losing her own life. I'm happy to report she's now back to earning the profits she's achieved before the terrorist attack. But she has a new focus. She gives a percentage of her profits to those who have faced dreadful losses and in the name of those who were lost in the towers. Before we look at strategies for overcoming losses, we need to identify the many ways traders have found to create an environment of loss. No plan of action. This is an excellent way to lose money and to lose it quickly. Why make a plan anyway? Would you drive from New York to Los Angeles without a GPS when you're trying to get there in a week? You could would be exciting and you might be lucky enough to reach your goal without too many errors, but each error will cost you some time. If you trade without a plan, your chances of success slim to none. Yes, you may be one of the lucky few who hits it big at first, but the odds are minimal. Without a plan, you'll find yourself buffeted about by the winds of chance and the opinions of others, the persuasion of newsletters and advisors, panderings of brokers and the bias of the media. Your responses will be whimsical. But the greatest danger is that you'll not learn anything from your behavior. If you're unaware of what you did wrong, the consequences of your actions will not be deadly apparent to you. And you may run out of money before you learn your lessons. But what exactly do I mean by a plan? Here's my definition of a trading plan. Everything that you would have in a normal business plan that you would need for any entrepreneurial endeavor, include, include it within that plan, you need a strategy, which includes a set of indicators that permits a relatively objective evaluation of market entry and exit, as well as risk management. This could mean that you're following a computerized trading system signals, from a chart book, a newsletter, astrology, or random number generator. Regardless of where the input comes from, it must be traded as relatively close as possible and as often as possible. What I recommend is that you employ a mechanical trade every system in the beginning and more flexible exit system. In other words, 
I advised against rigidity, against inflexibility following any plan. But to stray from a plan, you must have a plan at the outset. Now, eventually, when you're consistent in following a set of rules for a period of time, you might be able to adjust your rules to include what I call an intuitive, intuitive filter. This is when you have approached the ranks of master trader. But I warn you, if you haven't handled your psychological issues, you should never go beyond a fairly mechanical plan. Two, too much information. Subscribe to and read as many publications as you can. Watch the television business news and follow the consensus of opinion. This is a surefire way to get confused and lose money while you're doing it. You'll find that most of your best trades are not only contrary to what you have read, but also contrary to what you want to believe. If you follow a trading advisor, do it so without second guessing. Remember that the more opinions you process, the more confused you'll get. Not enough capital. Starting with a small amount of capital and building up, wrong, wrong. Facts show that less the less you start with, the less likely your odds are of success. If you don't have enough capital to sit through a string of losses, you'll not be there to get in on the big winner when it finally comes. Pick the tops and bottoms. Tops and bottoms don't happen too often. Trying to pick them is like trying to find a needle in the haystack. You can find seasonal lows and highs with a good degree of success. However, you're always best getting into an existing uh, trend and riding them. You're better off trading with the established trend as opposed to trying to pick a change in trend before it happens. Get out of winners quickly and ride the losers. Many traders get anxious when they are in profitable positions. They have the urge to take the money and run before the market takes it back from them. But when they're in a losing position, they're up there patient and remorseful. They get mesmerized into a state of no action, hoping that the market will reverse trend. They ride losses for a long time and ex exit profits quickly. This is another sure way to lose money in the markets. And I need a drink, hold on. The water that is. Buy a better trading system. It's not the system that makes the profits, it's the trader. In the hand of a poor trader, a good system is useless. Spend more time developing yourself as opposed to your system, and it'll become time well spent. Simple and inexpensive systems often work the best. Every now and then, you'll run across an expensive system that holds promise. If you decide to buy it, if you are convinced it's worthwhile, you must also make commitment to trade in according to the rules. If you can't do that, don't waste your money on that system. Spread your positions to overtake, over, avoid taking losses. This little trick really works. In fact, it most often puts you in double jeopardy. It's just another way to generate commissions and losses. Action trading. Get into the trading for the action. Most traders don't understand themselves. In fact, most traders are uncertain about their goals in the market. They'll tell you that they're looking for profits and their behavior will convey an another message. Many traders may trade just for the action because they are addicted to their adrenaline rush. Some traders enjoy telling their friends that they're speculate the futures, and yet other traders just uh, get in just to legally just to satisfy the need to gamble. And yes, it is gambling. Trading for the wrong reasons. Finally, some traders just trade for the challenge. Now, although there is probably nothing wrong with most of these goals, the fact is that most traders don't know that these are in fact their goals. They don't understand their motivation and in failing to do so, they can't direct their intellectual energy in the appropriate direction. Self-understanding facilitates attainment of goals by highlighting the best vehicle towards the desired end. Furthermore, the failure to understand oneself will obscure the reasons for losses. Hence, 
the learning process is either slowed down or totally ineffective. Since it's the function of losses to educate, the value of losses won't be fully effective if it's beneficial at all. Remember, trading is a trip of discovery about yourself. And the best way to learn about yourself comes from how you deal with losses. Not enough education. Most traders don't understand the markets. How could they? Very easy. Most speculators are self-educated. They either have read one book, glanced over a book, or they have picked up their education along the way. This may suffice for a general understanding, but it won't tell you all you need to know. I believe that all traders should start with the Jesse Livermore uh, book, Reminiscence of a Stock Operator. This will give you a foundation of the markets. You'll learn such things as how orders are filled, how the bid and offer function on the floor, or that used to function on the floor, the role and function of different types of markets. These are all important in traders' repertoire since they make human error less likely and they promote a solid base for operational procedures. And it gives you an understanding of the pulse of the market. Disorganization. Many traders aren't organized. They have systems, indicators, charts, signals, uh, newsletters, quote machines, and hotline recommendations from various advisors. But few traders have coordinated all of this into an operational, organized, cohesive, set of operating principles. Speculation and investing are a form of doing business. Success requires order and direction. Would you fly with a pilot who had no flight plan or safety checklist? I hope not. No rules after drawdowns. Many traders don't stay in long enough. How many traders are able to emotionally accept more than three consecutive losses in the market? Many trading systems inherently require a person in financial ability to sit through five or six or even eight consecutive losses and up to 25% dollar drawdown. It's during these periods of drawdown that most traders err. When you do have a series of losses, it's important to ask questions. Is this within the parameters of my system? And have I been following my rules to the letter? Stay in the game too long. On the other hand, some traders don't know when to quit, when to admit their system just isn't any good or they aren't using it correctly. Such traders fail to the tune of many dollars and they do so repeatedly. You need to know when your system isn't working and when you're not working. But leave risk is for other traders. It would appear that there are many trading systems, methods, and timing indicators which have profit potential. Those who have developed and tested trading systems know that although profitable systems aren't easy to find, they do exist. But as the Zen philosopher said, every front has a back, and the bigger the back, the bigger the front. Simply stated, Every mechanical trading system, no matter how well it performs in hypothetical testing, has its downside. The greater the rewards promised by a system, the greater the risk exposure. The simple fact of the matter is that trading involves risk and that there's no system, method, or indicator which has ever been developed which doesn't entail risk. We accept this as a fact of trading life. As strange as this may sound to you, many traders don't understand the true meaning of risk. They feel that risk is for the other traders. Only when controlled with the reality of risk, loss, do they understand its full impact. Only when the threat of loss is real can they respond. Trading without the necessary skills. After years of study, I've concluded that trading systems, methods, and indicators comprise about 25% of the total equation for success. 15% is luck, and the remaining 60% depends upon the trader's response to the system and the markets. All traders aren't created equal when it comes to trading discipline. Some are more reactive than others, some more tense than others, some are too confident, others too sensitive, others too detached. 
It's the response of the trader, which constitutes the single most important variable in the equation for trading success. Too many traders lose in the markets simply because they don't possess the necessary skills to trade effectively. The fact is that most traders have to learn to fail their way to success because they choose to take shortcuts that don't work. They scamp on education and overcoming their issues. If they have money, passion, and fortitude to get through these tedious, unprofessional induction into the trading business, they might be ready to make the right choices. Now let's look at methods for overcoming loss issues. There are many methods to handle issues dealing with loss. We will first start with good behaviors to give you the skills and strengths that help you to counteract the losing behaviors that I just outlined. They can't be developed instantaneously, but you but you can get, give them time you need to develop and uh, to achieve success. Be consistent. Consistency covers a multitude of behaviors and includes everything from placing orders to enter and exit by the rules to keeping your system data updated as required. Consistency is a quintessential aspect of all learning. In order to achieve consistent results, consistent behavior is necessary. If you don't follow a system with consistency, you'll never know whether the system works or not. You'll only have the hypothetical results and will not mean much to you. Consistency will give you the feedback you need in order to be successful. Whether the feedback is a profit or a loss, still important feedback, which relates to directly to behavior. Learn to develop appropriate emotions. Inappropriate emotions are the chief enemy of the speculator, always boring from within, uh, said Jesse Livermore. Too much pessimism uh, will cause you to either get out too soon or to not get in when you should. And too much optimism will cause you to hold on when you should be getting out and possibly re reversing position. Emotions can be controlled by the use of relaxation techniques, consciously re readjusting your internal or external focus. And I need some water, hold on. Next, be persistent. There are few traders who have the persistence to trade their system by the rules once they have experienced more than three consecutive losses. If you know your system, however, you'll know that it may take up to seven or eight consecutive losses before getting back on track. Persistence is the ability to go with the system through bad times as well as good. When I was in sales, I would average two sales for 48 rejections. Each rejection would lead me closer to those who would give me a sale. With this attitude, I, I earned more than 150,000 per year. And that's when I was in, in business uh, in the 1980s. Contrast this with people sitting alongside me who were earning 30,000 per year doing the same job because they weren't willing to accept rejection. Be honest with yourself. The eminent Russian philosopher Ospensky claimed that self-discipline was the root cause of virtually all personal and interpersonal problems. When it comes to trading, he's most assuredly correct. If you can be honest with yourself about every aspect of your trading, you refuse to break the rules of your system. Or if you do break the rules, you'll do so under very well-defined circumstances. Self-honesty is one of the most valuable qualities a trader can possess. Learn from losers. Every trader has dealt with losses, when they're trading uh, related or not. Loss is the heart of every painful experience in our lives, even the smallest ones. If we reflect back, and all of the traumas and difficulties of her life becomes clear that most of these events were related to a loss. For example, losing a race at school uh, is indeed a loss. Experience a death with someone you know is a loss of relationship. 
And experiencing the embarrassed moment in front of others is painful because it results in the loss of self-esteem. Even when we make choices such as moving to a new location or changing jobs, the result is the loss of the family, fa uh, familiar faces and experiences. When these events are thrust upon us, they're even more painful. There are a variety of ways we can perceive losses. They can be a stepping stone to major breakthroughs. Losses can result in an awakening of who and what we really are and can align our values so that we remember what really it, what's really important to us. Basically, losses can be lessons and turning points. Although the painful experiences are always low moments in our lives, at the time they occur, when we look back at some of the greatest joys and successes of our lives, they often connect it to a loss. If you look for the silver lining in a loss, in most cases you'll find one. When I've interviewed some of the best traders in the world, I always ask them about the roots of their great success. Nearly always they say that a big loss caused them to make the transition from being a mediocre trader to doing what it takes to be a great trader. Okay, let's look at options after a loss. First thing you should do is review your methodology. The, uh, the first option trader has to look at his present methodology and make the decision to make some changes. In this scenario, loss is then perceived as a lesson and an opportunity to improve. Treat losses as a necessary step. Second option is to treat losses as an important or necessary step. <coughs> Excuse me in the achievement of one's goals. For a trader, this mindset would have them responding to a loss by saying to himself, this loss is one more step toward getting the best possible overall outcome. Losses must happen on the way to gains. Therefore, this loss brings me one step closer to my next gain. This is particularly true for salesmen who know that they'll receive a certain number of no's before they get a yes, just like the example I gave you uh, from my own experience. Perceive negative thinking as a cause for loss. The third option is to perceive a loss as proof that the negative thinking behind it is the cause. Trading is too difficult for me, or it's hopeless, or my system has, is no good, or my life is all about failure and loss. Observing this could lead to a different choice and therefore a new uh, positive direction. Retreat or give up. The fourth option is that losses can also mean for some traders retreating sub, uh, submission to being a victim or just plain giving up. Okay, let's look at strategy for de dealing with future losses. Use the loss as an opportunity to expand rather than having the loss deplete you of your resources and strength. So what can you do for yourself to change these condition responses uh, that I call anchors? When a major loss takes place in our lives, we tend to associate certain parts of the experience with a particular loss, by extension to all losses. These associations become anchors which are unconsciously tied to that experience. These anchors, when they reoccur in our lives, take us back immediately to the feelings and thoughts associated with the original experience. For example, when Patrick was a child, his father worked for a company that moved him on a regular basis. By the time Patrick had finally fit into his new school, made new friends and started feeling successful in his new life, his entire world would come apart. It was time to move on again. He lost everything he had worked hard to gain. The anchor for loss for Patrick was success and stability. As a trader, whenever his trading had reached a high stable of level of profit, Patrick became uncomfortable. Without knowing why on a conscious level, 
Patrick was waiting to lose it all. His unconscious mind would then complete the pattern by creating the losses he was expecting. I'll give you another uh, story about a fellow that I worked with a long time ago. Uh, he came to me because he says, I'm on my way to becoming a money manager. And I said, well, how much do you have in your trading account right now? And he says, a hundred, uh, uh, sorry, $10,000. And I said, well, you can't afford to work, work with me because um, it's 70, 7,500 to work with me. And he says, I can't afford not to do it. Well, when I work with him, what we found, what we found out is that when he was a kid, uh, someone stole his piggy bank. It was his cousin, and he was saving for some skates. Later on, his parents went through a divorce, uh, and he felt the loss of that. So when he got older and uh, wanted to be a trader, every time there was a the possibility of a loss, he would retreat from it because uh, he didn't like the feeling of that loss, and he would keep from, from losing things and therefore losing the overall um, trade. He went on to manage over $300 million the last time I talked to him. Okay, so let's look at anchors away. Just a second. So the first thing you need to do is <clears throat> be aware of loss associations. <clears throat> first, you have to be aware of things which you now associate with loss. If you think about it, you'll be able to uncover these anchors. They are the sights, the sounds, and the things, the words, the smells which bring you down, which make you sad, which make you uncomfortable, and you have no rational reason to, for these feelings. Another way to uncover them is to recreate in your mind's eye the losses that are painful to you and note the particular details that stand out for you, which ones seem to be represent the experience. Then you uncouple those anchors. You uncouple them so they, they aren't creating the feeling of loss each time you encounter them. This can be done by replacing these anchors with new associations. For example, if you associate December with losing money because you once lost a great deal of money in December, and you find yourself repeating losses at that time of the year, you need to unlink that association. So close your eyes and imagine the most rewarding trade you can think of, one which will create a high charge of emotion in you. Now imagine that trade takes place in December. For this process to work, you must imagine it vividly and emotionally charged. You must create a high level of emotion. The more you repeat the process, the more effective this process will be for you. In other words, you are creating a new anchor. There was a fellow uh, that I worked with in the, the New York Board of Trade, and he said every August uh, he lost a lot of money in August, September. And I came to find out that when, that was the time that he'd go on vacation. But he'd go on what he would consider his wife's vacation. She wanted to go to Europe. She, <coughs> she wanted to go on cruises. <coughs> Excuse me. But what he considered a vacation was going fishing, going camping. So he wasn't getting the feeling that he needed. So he had this loss of the kind of vacation he needed. So he was actually punishing himself. So I said, well, you need to take your own vacation, but of course you have to take your wife's vacation too, or you're going to have uh, other problems as well. Install a new anchor. The last step is to replace the old negative anchor with new positive ones. So think back to a time when something really inspired or motivated you. A trading book you read, a trader you met, mentored, 
the big lesson you learn until you experience sensations that really, really feel good. Then think of one word description that describes that feeling or emotion. Repetition is important to setting strong anchors so that only your word description is enough to bring on desired state. For a lot of my traders, it's showtime. So when you're creating anchors, uh, realize that you have created anchors all your life. So this is not new to you. This is something that you have always done. But what you want to do is create the kind of anchors that will feel good. The anchor of coming to your mother's house and smelling her lasagna. The anchor of seeing the, uh, your baby doing uh, beautiful things. You want to create, create as many anchors as you can in your life. And when you do, clap your hands so that when you go back uh, to uh, those experiences that are bad, uh, you clap your hands and you want to get it to a point where that anchor will change to a positive experience because you will have accumulated a whole bunch of good anchors. And now I want to talk to you about levels of coaching to create transformation. It's, it's important that you realize that coaching isn't the same at all levels. Uh, someone can give you good advice. That's one level of coaching. And that's on a conscious level. Uh, and that could be all you need. And then there's the subconscious level, which is done through uh, hypnosis, which is done through uh, neuro-linguistic programming. And then there's the energetic, spiritual, and superconscious levels. This is done through the type of work that I do that comes at uh, a level of, of transformation where you're actually no longer the person that you, you used to be. This is the kind of work I do. And right now, you know, I'm, I, I probably do 20% uh, of what I used to do. I used to work 16 hours a day, uh, six and a half days a week. And now most of the people that I work with are clients of the past and once in a while people that, that uh, recommend uh, me to them. So I'm going to give you an opportunity today. Okay, before we do that, where's your focus? Your brain will focus on what you are interested in and what you value and what you expect to happen. So always understand what your focus is. And then ask yourself, what results would I achieve if I were to trade my plan consistently without unnecessary losses? ask yourself what is it costing me by not doing whatever it's necessary to overcome my issues okay ah oh, forgot those slides were on there sorry uh, <clears throat> this is my trading on target home study course when i originally introduced this it was uh, three thousand dollars and i had more tapes and uh i mean more cds and uh, other trinkets to go along with this, but now I've condensed it uh, to where if you go online, it would be $600. With this, you get a an evaluation with me in person on the phone. Uh, it's 14 pages long. There's no wrong or right answer. It's just how you feel about it. And I can tell you exactly where your problems are in trading, uh, in the psychology of trading and what you have to do about it. Now, Winning Edge 1, 2, 3, and 4 are all about traders that I've worked with, their particular problem, how they've overcome that problem, and how you could overcome that problem. Uh, and then you could see there are other books that are involved in this particular um, group of um, course, study course. Uh, what I'm going to offer you is this because everybody's offering good stuff today. Uh, 
get in touch with me at adtograi at gmail.com and just give me your phone number. I won't give you a sales pitch. I'll give you a call and I will tell you what the special deal is. And it is very special, but I won't tell you on this webinar. Uh, so if you're considering it, just give me your phone number. I'll call you either today or tomorrow. And I, what, I, what I don't want to do is receive calls because uh, then I'm overwhelmed. So let me call you. I'll call you today or tomorrow. I'll give you a price, which will be incredible. And um, then you can make a decision as whether, whether you want to get it or not. Okay, Sherry, I'm open for questions. Is there anybody there that has any questions for me? Let me take a look. <clears throat> Okay, guys, if you got any questions for Adrian, now is the time to post them, please. Okay, well, people are posting questions. I've got a uh, fishbowl here of questions that I've been asked before. So I'm just going to pull one out and I'll answer that question. Oh, well, uh, I got one from John. Okay, let's do John's first. John says, as one of Adrienne's early one-on-one -on -one clients in 1990, she and her method not only helped me become a very successful trader, but improve my life immeasurably. She'll give you insights into your psyche, help you get emotional control, and the tools to help you improve your life in many ways, and stay with you for good. Her personal program is priceless. Her books and videos are worth every cent. Are worth every cent. I, I was having to scroll it. <laughs> I was losing it. Sorry about that's that. Crazy. Well, that's very nice. <laughs> that yes, that was really nice, John. <laughs> I wonder which John it is. <laughs> oh, okay. So he posted it twice. That's why I was thinking that I was missing something. Okay. Oh. Well, that's a pretty good testimony right there, folks. Yeah. Now, sure did is. I have? Did I have? A, okay. So you want everyone to email their telephone number to you so you can call them. Yeah, email their telephone number and the time to what and the time to reach you. Okay, let me do this. I'm going to put it in the chat. So it's adtogray at gmail.com. You could always find it on my website, uh, tradingontarget.com. You could you could look through the books there before uh, calling me. But uh, just the trader's evaluation alone will be the price that I will give you for it. Because after I uh, let go of all my inventory, that's it. I'm not selling any more books and, you know, just only, only working with the uh, traders that I know uh, and go on to do more writing for screenplays because that's what I do now. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. All right, I posted that. Um, John wants to know, is your business plan video still available? Yes, the business plan, not the video, that's not available, just the uh, the book, but the book has uh, everything in it, and that's part of the uh, home study course. Oh, cool. All right. So they need to go to tradingontarget.com to check that out as well. Uh, Marco would like to know, what if you live in Denmark? Uh, if you live in Denmark, I call you in Denmark. <laughs> She'll call you in Denmark, Marco. <clears throat> but I guess you're going to need to, um, well, you may know what the time zone is there. Time zones and I do not get along. <laughs> right. I'm sure it's probably at least five or six hours difference. So uh, <clears throat> just let me know a time where, you know, I'm up and about. <laughs> and not sleeping and and you're yeah. up and not sleeping so he's six hours ahead of us it's 10 p.m there good job marco this is a late one for you all right anybody else we're right on time thank you ma'am thank you so much for being with us and thank you for having me thank, thank you for everyone coming to the uh this webinar, I really appreciate your time. I think that gets everybody where they need it. Nope, nope, gotta do www.tradingontarget.com. Trading 
Target.com. There, that works. But write me at adtilgray at gmail.com and I will call you. Excellent. All right. Thank you so much. All right, thank folks, you. this is going to do it for us. Adrian, thank you. It's always a pleasure. I appreciate it a lot. And just a couple more things to go on to. I'm going to show my screen. That was uh, Adrian with Trading on Target. Guys, take advantage of that. That's, that is a well of knowledge that you're going to want to really have uh, access to, right? And I mean, how many people are saying, I'll call you? So this has been a presentation of TradersExclusive.com. I want to thank you for staying till the end. I want to thank you for being here with us. I really appreciate all of my speakers coming in. Our next webinar is on May 18th. I hope that you will avail yourselves and come and see us again. Um, and from everybody here at Traders Exclusive, we just want to say, trade well. Have a good day, everyone.